Yeah, let's let's talk about how how dogs uh, should all be males and cats should all be females and <laughs> they sh- they should be able to do each other. <laughs> You remember that part in the beginning? Yeah. When uh, they're like, describe your woman. And he's like, demure. <laughs> and they're like, what else about her? Sleazy. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me feel great every time. Uh, is Hamza going to be on this episode? Where's he sh- Hamza? He should be on, I'm guessing, maybe 10 minutes. Because the official time's like four. But I figured oh. you'd already be like here because we are weird. Because we seem to start earlier than we than the official time. So I thought I'd hop on and just, you know, make sure you w- weren't sitting here oh, silent. It's so interesting, because... Uh... It was 3.30. But then, I guess, when Hamza came on, I just said four to make, like, be sure, because I know sometimes work keeps you late. So I thought, well, make it four, just to be safe. Um, well, did you have a time change recently? Let it go. Did it change an hour for you? Like, the daylight sleepy time? Or whatever uh, it's called? A couple of weeks ago, I think. Yeah, I did too. And since then, because right now for me, it's almost five. Whoa. Oh. It's like late for me. I don't mind. Late's good. But uh, you've been thinking we've been starting early. I've been thinking I've been a half hour late every week. Ah. Hmm. So maybe we should do uh, whatever time it is now every week. Yeah, well, I'll say 10 minutes from now is okay. the official time. Oh, all right. I'll do that then. Okay. That should work. Great. Should. Yeah. That's my five o'clock. Right. So your five o'clock, my four o'clock, and whatever harms is harms are a clock. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, I think it's his um, two o'clock. Yeah, good old Hamza and his two o'clock. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him again. He reminds me of someone. I don't know if I've ever told you that. No. Yeah, Hamza reminds me of. This guy I went to high school with, he was a little younger than me. His older brother is actually in a Sega 32X uh, commercial. More like an infomercial. You remember the Sega 32X? Uh, vaguely, yeah. I, I, I remember its bleak little life. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a Sonic and Knuckles lock-on technology applied to an entire console. Yeah. Like, you don't need a whole new system, just take this giant toaster shaped thing and just shove it in your Genesis and put a new game in like slip I think slip was the big Mm. seller in some Spider-Man game. Anyway. Oh yeah. His brother was in the 32 X commercial where he went like this. He was this Caucasian guy with hairy arms who was like into lacrosse, you know, uh, Uh, he went 32 X, 32 X, 32 X fang. Oh God. (laughs) 90s commercials really were the pits. They were the darkness. <laughs> makes, me, makes me feel great any, every time. Anyway, he had, he had a little brother, and they were all in a religious cult called, like, the Cannery, or, you know, you know, it had one of those weird names, like, you know, Boxes of Onions or something. He's just like, why are you called that? Oh, don't question the Cannery. Don't question us. Um, and, and they weren't allowed to masturbate, which is, like, their big thing. Um, and they used to have support groups about uh, masturbating. Or, or lack thereof, or not masturbating, and um, they called it the struggle. Yeah. So, so <laughs> when you like, I call what I do, which is the opposite of that, the struggle. <laughs> the opposite of not masturbating yeah. is the struggle. Yeah, doing it all the time, forever. <laughs> well, that is a struggle. That's hard fucking work. It's uh. That's my support group. <laughs> Continue. Uh, no, no, I want to hear more about your support group for people who have to masturbate all the time because it's it's uh, it's a challenge. It's, it's not easy. It's hard. Penis erection, <laughs> erectile tissue engorged was the joke. There. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's because uh, you have to, you know, be horny. I guess is that the hard part of masturbating all the time? Is uh, trying to be horny all the time? Or is that easy? Is that the easy part? You've got to maintain um, a minimum horn level, which is difficult when, say, sleeping 
or shopping. <laughs> you know, you're you're trying to buy canopies uh, while remembering, you know, I've got to get my horn dog on, <laughs> which is I'm. Uh, bogarting your lovely cult story, though. Please continue. Oh no, that's okay. That's okay. Um, uh, there wasn't too much more to it that they uh, they called. I'm not sure actually, because he n- would never admit if he masturbated, but he would talk about this the the problem of wanting to masturbate as the struggle or strugs. Man. He did not call it the strugs, did he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is brilliant. Mad drugs. Mad drugs, dog. We would say. <laughs> what were you doing last night? Oh, I was having the drugs. And whether he was masturbating or just thinking about masturbating and not doing it. Because yeah. ironically, the drugs sounds like a colloquialism for masturbating. I know. And maybe it is. Yeah. I was getting my vinegar drugs. <laughs> oh, he was a great guy. He, uh, he later quit the cult and... Um, formed this really weird band that that did sing about penises after all um but i i could never get farther than the first line into the song that he sang that was like i know an old man in the corner who had a crooked cock and then i was like i'm turning this off (laughs) i don't want to think about a crooked cock. well at least it was a happy ending it was he's married now i think and uh you know singing his songs now he doesn't have to Strug himself off. <laughs> or not. Yeah. Think about strugging himself off. Struggling with the strugs. Yeah. Yeah. Good for yeah. him. Yeah, I like him a lot. He's a very nice guy. And he's got hairy arms just like Hamza, and that's why I told the story. He reminds me of Hamza in that way. Though Hamza, I don't think, has any struggle with, with masturbating or not. Yeah, we'll ask him when he comes on. Yeah, that'll be good. I'll enjoy that. Yeah. So until then, I guess we'll talk amongst ourselves about... The big week in video games that happened, right? It's a big oh. week. Oh, yeah. Stuff happening. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my. Are you, uh... So much has happened, I don't know what to do with these tossed salads and scrambled eggs. Why do I know that? That's Frasier. Right? Mm. Yeah. Salad. Our salads and scrambled eggs. And we'd all laugh because the dog would do something hilarious. Oh. I, uh, Frasier, yeah. Well, they, they, uh, Amazon announced God of War 3 Ascension. No, not God of War 3, just God of War Ascension. Another prequel. Yeah. I broke God of War 4, ostensibly. Hopefully. Hopefully it'll, it'll be... Worthy of the name of God of War 4 for the fans. I hope so. I, I thought that was a big story. Uh, it broke at like late at night and I was really tired. But I'm like, oh, i got to write it. Big story. Don't want to let the structure it down. Expecting all the God of War fans to uh, freak out in the comments and be really happy. But there was a lot of apathy. It was a, lot it was a of, bit uh, mild, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, another prequel. Uh, uh, PS3 level graphics. Who cares? Yeah. I think a part of it is that there is a mental aspect. If you if it's if it doesn't have four in it, mm. it doesn't feel as big. Even if it is a full fledged game, and even though it's a prequel, you know, sequentially it's a sequel. Sure. Um, but I guess because it's called God of War Ascension and is a prequel, there's less excitement. Coupled with the fact that this has been on the cards for a long time, I don't think anyone was surprised this was coming. Yeah. Sony had been teasing it for a while. And I've noticed among gamers now, like, there's a lot more lethargy going on. Mm. People are getting a bit tired of of the sequels, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, we had the backlash against Modern Warfare 3, the backlash, obviously, against Mass Effect 3. Mm -hmm. People, I mean, people aren't giving really a shit about Crisis 3 that was announced recently. Um, Mm -hmm. Maybe people are getting just a little bit sick of sequels. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the... uh... The three thing again, and this is the third God of War release, I think, on the PS3 because they bundled the um, HD versions of the two PSP prequels, which are pretty good. Ready at Dawn did those, but there's, I think, people are really, uh, they feel like they've got it, like they're on to what developers are doing. They've got the message. They've got the God of War message. They've had the God of War experience. 
they've had most of the experiences that the major franchises can offer right now, so they're really ready for for the PS4 and the Xbox. Which which one's Orbis again? One of them. Uh, that's the rumored code name for the PS3. Okay, the PS3. Yeah. Two. P- uh, as, uh, Sorry, name. PS3. Sorry, yeah, the PS3. No, it's the PS3 thing. too. Yeah, or four. PS thing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Depends on um, how logical your numbering system is, I suppose. Um, yeah, they want that, and they want to see graphics that they've never seen before, and they want a whole new franchise. I think the um, what is it? Today's Tuesday, so just in a couple days, we'll find out if Sony's going to do their whole Smash Brothers thing, which has been rumored for God four years, five years since I started with Destructoid. I think I've been hearing about that maybe happening. Did you hear about that one, Jim? They registered the domain. Yeah, what's what's it called? Like all superstar Sony fun party fun thing? <laughs> I, I think it's a uh, PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale. I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it was, you were trying to do a joke name that was bad, and then you heard the real name. Yeah, I knew it was something stupid. Well, uh, it's a little long. Uh, yeah, yeah, they could sum it up a bit. Just uh, you know, punch them or something. People just want to punch him. Yeah. Right? I, mean, I can't doing. really. I mean, Kratos versus the fat bloke from Heavy Rain. <laughs> I don't see it working. <laughs> but I guess we'll have to just squint and use our imagination and say that it is feasible. Well, you know, Smash Brothers, uh, a lot of the people who love Smash Brothers don't really care about who the characters are. They just think it's a really good fighting game, and it, it's um, it's a different enough fighting game that it defines itself in a in a way that makes it worth existing. You know, like so many two D fighting games are similar enough to other two D fighting games that only really diehard fans can say, "Oh yeah, it's justified its own existence." But Smash Brothers is pretty different. So if they manage to do that uh, for Sony, if they manage to make a game that actually is worth playing and not only writing off of the uh, the characters. I think people would be really excited if it's just a Smash Brothers clone with Sony characters. That's just that doesn't work for for Sony. It certainly doesn't fit there. Sony I mean, franchises don't. Yeah, like Smash Brothers works because it's very light and cartoony and mm. everything. It's got that light-hearted atmosphere to it where it kind of works. But mm-hmm. you look at Sony's franchises; they're all very grim, dark, and serious. And I mean, that's why I say like I'm just trying to imagine a heavy rain character going up against like. The Chimera from Resistance. It, it's, it's it's weird because those franchises are a lot more grounded and realistic, so the idea of them going into a, a crossover game is a lot sillier than something as cartoony and silly as Smash Brothers. Sure, sure. So sure. It's, it's, I'm certainly interested. I'm intrigued. Well, that's the thing. If they do it as a kind of serious fighter and it's a, it has a, uh, a sense of seriousness throughout... They could pull it off in some sort of like weird sci-fi-ish sort of, um, you know, like that time the Highlander met the other Highlander. You know that time? Worst yeah. analogy ever. That was the worst. <laughs> that was so bad. Uh, but if they bring back Parappa, you know, if it's Parappa versus Nathan Drake versus um, Robit from Jumping Flash versus um, Kratos, then then I will buy the game and no one else will, basically. <laughs> You know, the old weirdos like me will buy it, and everyone who's kind of into Sony because they're current and um, kind of innovative in terms of moving things in a more Hollywoodish direction, which people really like about the PS3. It's got so many movie-style games. They're not going to want a goofy Parappa versus Kratos game. Only, only strange people will want that. I don't know. I'm not too sure about that. There are yeah. Sony's mm-hmm. got its you know base of fans. Um, mostly on N4G, that will, you know, get anything. And this is probably their dream come true. Um, But yeah, I mean, I'm interested in it. I will get it if it's not a straight one-on-one fighter, because that's... Sure. I just, I can't deal with those games. If it's something interesting, if it's got some weird twist, I mean, calling it a battle royale seems to imply it'll be a little bit different from the norm. So, yeah, I want to check it out. I want to see what it's like. 
I hope so. I hope so. I wonder. I th- I feel like Sony's fans are really split generationally. Like unlike Nintendo, who every console has just about every console has Mario, uh, Zelda, Metroid, multiple iterations of that. So you know, uh, through the years, Nintendo fans have always had kind of the same stable of games. Sony's been really different between PlayStation 1, 2, and 3. PlayStation 1 was Ape Escape and uh, Parappa and uh, Jumping Flash, like I mentioned. Then PlayStation 2, they phased out Parappa. They had a couple of Ape Escape games, but we're definitely getting more towards realistic. And then PlayStation 3, they've abandoned almost all of their PlayStation 1 franchises and are all new. So so that's where I see the... Um, the turnoff happening. I don't know if PlayStation One fans really care about PlayStation Three franchises as much, and and vice versa. <laughs> Talking. They should do a cart racer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, that sums up what. If this game fails, it will be because everyone just sees it as a. Uh, has the level of integrity of of just another card racer. I think the main problem with it is Sony doesn't really have an identifying theme. Mm. I mean, it's got that Hollywood type quality to the, to its games, I guess, but that's I mean, that's someone else's theme. That's Hollywood, you right. know. Sure. Nintendo has an undeniable sense of character and an undeniable style. Mm-hmm. Where and a lot of it is, of course, tied around Mario, who is the face of it all. So sure. it, it kind of works in that you know a Nintendo game is a Nintendo game, whereas Sony and Microsoft kind of bleed into each other. Mm-hmm. So it's it's hard to get that. I mean, but then even Microsoft, you know, they've got Master Chief and and everything like this one iconic character that everyone associates with Microsoft. There isn't a lot you really like. No one unifying thing that is associated with Sony that you can build a crossover game around. Like the closest they've got is Nathan Drake and, and mm, mm-hmm. I mean he's, he's just a guy with jeans on. Yeah, he's I mean, a guy he's with not. jeans, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, entertaining uh... mm-hmm. and, and sure. witty at times, but not not exactly a, a beacon of original personification. Yeah, he doesn't sum up too much other than like uh, you know, I'm fun. I guess. Is that what he sums up? I don't yeah, you know. I, I don't like Nathan Drake too much, so I'm struggling to even talk about him. He's just so boring. Oh, I'm overcome with boredom. Like, if, I, over me. if I was your manager at an Apple store, you'd think I was great. <laughs> sure, I, I think you're great no matter what. You're great. Yeah, but no, I was talking about Nathan Drake. That's Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, the yeah. attitude I get. Yeah, from, he'd, uh, he'd be a good store manager. You'd like him to be a store manager. You know, he he, mean he wouldn't get say. hung up on the dress code. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He'd be he'd all be like, untucked. you know, you'd be like, can I take the afternoon off um, to have a baby? And he'll be all like, oh, yeah, no problem. Go out and have two if you want. I'm Nathan Drake. <laughs> oh, that makes me like him way more. I hope that's what Uncharted Four is—just him at the, you know, stocking shelves and growling. Oh, here mm-hmm. she is, Hamza. Oh, hi, Holmes. How you doing? I am so sorry. I, 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 I don't know why I thought we're starting later. Today has been really bad. Oh, I think bad you did it right. It's a, uh, um, Jim has thought my four o'clock is my five o'clock. I think this whole time. So we've all been mixed up for weeks. And just kind of winging it. So you did great. It's good to have you on. Don't worry about it. You're doing. You're doing good. All right. How are you? I've had the worst fucking day. Oh no, Hamza, what happened? Okay. So is Jim? Is Jim even here? I haven't heard him yet. Jim's in here. Yeah, he's just listening to you. Okay. Well. So I went to this EA event last night, and we're recording, by the way. So don't say anything you don't want the world to know. Oh, okay. Mm. Wait, have you been recording? How long have you been recording for? He just starts recording, I think. Oh, all right. Well, as long as okay, he's not talking, what a strange man he is. Jim, are you still there? Your box is there. Jim. Oh, I heard you, but not really. You sounded like a, uh, a ghost in a can. Wow, I almost said like a ghost as well. 
Yeah, you thought you were thinking the same thing. Make a good anime, anime movie. Huh? I think he's trying to, Jim, to try to talk. You hearing anything, Hamza? No, nah, dude. I wonder what happened to Jim. Well, I guess we'll just have to do the show without Jim for a while. I'll, I'll hear your story. Tell me your story while Jim figures out how to talk again. So, there's an EA event last night. And um, they were showing off Crisis 3 and a new Battlefield 3 map and mode. Um, okay. The The... The embargo was set for 5 a.m. the next morning, so earlier this morning. I don't know why I got it in my head that I had to rush and get this thing done so it could be live at exactly 5 a.m. Like, probably one of the worst traffic hours for for big pieces in the first place, right? Yeah, that's awful. So I, I do it, I get the preview written up and everything, and then 5 a.m. comes, and they haven't mailed the assets yet. And then, so I I basically, I got two hours of sleep, I finished the write-up at one, I finished, and then I went to sleep for a couple hours, woke up around 5 to see if we got any emails, didn't, so then I set my alarm to go off every 20 minutes so I could check on this, and it was around 8 o'clock where I was like, fuck everything and i think i sent an email to uh you guys like asking someone to provide backup which jim was more than happy to do thankfully uh, oh, i didn't even see that oh. it didn't huh. come to it because all they sent was a trailer which we got from like i don't know youtube before they even mailed it to us and then what i thought i thought they're gonna send us screens too but they didn't they sent it last week they, the screens i used were from last week so it's just I don't know. It was it was just a bad morning. You worked so hard, Hamza. I'm sorry. And now Jim, Jim is sending me via text message saying he might have to end this call, so your story might not even get in the show. Our whole show so far might not even be in the show, Hamza. Sorry. Okay, that's fine. <sighs> You're so accepting. He can edit it. He says he has it recorded. Adorable. Okay, no, it so doesn't we'll- matter. I, it matters. Every second of Hamza needs to. Get, people are so excited you're on the show now. But he's he's ending the call now. You only you ending it now, Jim? It's just so go weird. ahead. It's like that it. movie. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. I do apologize for the weirdness that happened. Um, Hamza was telling us a story about EA being EA. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. Do I, should I say it again or? Oh, I've got the story, so I can oh. add that all in. Um, but yeah, that's. I mean, it's publishers in general. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I personally like am not a f- fond of the preview shit. It's like I'm happy to do reviews because they give me like review copy or whatever, or I buy it if I have to. I review it, and there's that's it. I mm. cut and run, gone. Don't even have to look at that game ever again. Mm-hmm. Whereas with previews, it's just doing the actual preview is half the struggle. It's dealing with the bullshit that comes after. Sure. Typically, I mean, and... I feel like there's not too much bullshit. Like, I mean, I honestly love it when the embark- there is an embargo place for, say, at least 24 hours. Like, that's great. That gives everyone um, the same advantage. Like, no one has, has like... I mean, for the most case, no one has, like, the, the lead or exclusive, unless you're IGN or some fucking magazine. But <laughs> um, it does give us time to write. Like, I don't understand the, the idea of, like, no embargo or next day embargo or early morning embargo where, like, we're tired. We're yeah. writing up until, like, 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. Like, we could, we could write it, sure. It's going to be shitty. It's not going to be as great as, like... Me writing something while I'm well rested and not all grumpy when I wake up and I see there's nothing in my inbox for assets or hating life. Video games are hard. <laughs> yeah, they are hard. How how late were you playing video games last night, Hamza? Um, okay, well the event was started at uh, six, but it didn't really start till seven because these events never start on time. I don't know why sure. anyone ever assumes it does. And then uh, we saw the game literally uh, for 10 minutes. They only had like a presentation uh, hands-off. Like this is the first time they're showing it. They're not ready for hands-on or anything, but uh, just give us a taste of the game. And then 
uh, they ushered us out of the theater into a different room where they had a new map and new game mode for Battlefield 3. So we played that while everyone was basically waiting to do an interview with this one guy. And it was only one guy from Crytek there. Um, my interview with him just went up. I did a I did it for the Detoy show uh, last night. Oh, and, cool. Um, yeah, like our like even our interview was like because like it was supposed to be at nine ten and then it actually happened till like 10, like almost ten actually like at, at that point we me and Zach from uh, Revision Three we were like we really wanted to leave but like we just powered through it so we gave the coverage out there but um it's not easy the blogging people think oh blogging I'll just do a blog no. I gotta stay up all night and eat the cheese, eat the expensive cheese, and meet the strange man and talk to him <laughs> on video. And make the video good. Then you were like dead tired and full of cheese, and you had to somehow be fun on a video. It's not oh, easy. Oh yeah, and especially that too. Like I wasn't that great in the video uh, that just went up either. Like I, I, I kind of, I kind of come across as shitty. Like I, I can be good on video. Like, this is a perfect example of me being really, really shitty on video. Oh come on, you never know. The one man's shitty is another man's gold. Shit you might gold. get picked up for David Letterman's. You might be on Letterman's next. Yeah. They hey, might look at you a- and go, I like that kid. <laughs> Bring <laughs> him into Letterman's house. That's exactly how Nathan Drake, as the manager at uh, the Max Store, talks. No, he had a northern accent. Oh, I'm sorry. David Letterman is southern. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, subtle differences that the Americano Yankee pig togs will not pick up. Yeah, it is hard uh, for me. To tell I'm a communist now, by the way. So Whoa. that is something I've just decided. What? So <laughs> you are a filthy Yankee, corrupt, <laughs> great Satan, fork, gold fork man. We are the gold fork mans. Yeah, That's, meeting that... gold forks. Use... <laughs> Using pigs. To eat forks. The pigs don't know what they're doing. They don't realize they're now cutlery. Yeah, it's a terrible fate. Fucking they should, uh, we're, we should be ashamed, for sure. Before, uh, the reason I talked about Nathan Drake, Hamza, the part you missed of Podtoid was us talking about... Yeah, thanks for starting without me. <laughs> it just went that way. I was, I was waiting for you, and then... You never tell me what time we start. I'd say four o'clock, my time. Four o'clock, my time. Whatever time that is, arms of time. Oh, okay. Right. See, see, I kept thinking, like, four o'clock, my time today. And, yeah, I'm I, sorry. I just have it recording just in case there's anything good to go at the beginning of the show. And then Holmes told a lovely story. And so it just happened. And then I thought, well, fuck, I better email Hamza because I was thinking about you the whole time and being all concerned and caring for you because I'm a communist and we share. He cares about John. So the same thing happened to me all the time. I'd always come in late when uh, Max and Tara were already chatting with Jim about stuff. You know, it's just you get in when you get in, and uh, you'll get your time. You can talk about anything you want, Hamza. Anything you want tonight. What do you want? Tell your Nathan Drake story. Oh, well, I was just catching you up. We had talked about how uh, how God of War 3 got announced. I'm sorry, not God of War 3. God of War Ascension, which is like god of war 4 but not and how people weren't that excited and uh, another sony news the playstation all-stars battle royale might get announced uh this thursday and how just there's a lukewarmness to all of these things it's kind of a eh, the audiences seem split on it or it's hard to say whether they're going to be able to uh get behind that and just in general a lot of playstation franchises just feel a little tired at this point and i was gonna say before you came on hamza that my old idea before Little Big Planet kind of burned itself out, was for them to do a all Sony mascots battle royale Smash Brothers type game, except with uh, Little Big Planet sack boys being all the characters. I think that could have when when Little Big Planet was like this hot new thing. I think that could have gone over uh, really well because th- otherwise I don't know how you can mesh Parappa and Nathan Drake and all that. They just don't look like they exist in the same anything, you know. It's funny, like if that All Star game is actually happening, I mean, it probably is. But um, I, I like the idea of the fact that you could be able to play as—I uh, shouldn't say fact—but the idea that you could play as, say, Sweet Tooth 
or or uh, a Helgas Helgeist. How how are the I know you yeah. always read it. And you never say it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like you know, just killer murdering serial serial killers, whatever. Kratos even. And then you'll probably be fighting against I don't know Sly Cooper or Sackboy or something like cutie like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be in there for sure. Well, that was uh, what was fun about Smash Brothers Brawl is that it had Snake, and it had even more uh, presence of kind of tough guy characters in it, mixed with Mario and uh, Olimar from Pikmin and what like. I like that, but I don't know if Sony's people are gonna like that. I don't know if PlayStation fans, because there's not really any cute current PlayStation franchises that are really big, other than uh, Little Big Planet and. Um, Crash Bandicoot? Nope. No, the other no. one, the, the furry uh, Jack guy. Jack and Baxter? Yeah, yeah, I mix them all up. I yeah, can't Jack or Ratchet or even Sly Cooper. And how big are those? Do people buy those games for real? Or are they just well, They, they haven't them? really made any new ones in a while. I mean, they had some compilations, and then... I think they're coming out with a new Sly Cooper, though, right? They got Sly Cooper 4 coming out. Jack and Daxter hasn't... They've done nothing this generation apart from the HD things. And the last Ratchet and Clank game was that awful fucking that one that should have been a PSN download that Whoa. they packaged as a retail one. Ouch! And then yeah, there it was seem the... like they're going to do a, another Jack either, which was a great series, but it looks like they're all Naughty Dog's focus on The Last of Us now. Yeah, probably yeah. that makes sense. So those are so much more popular. There you go. There's another character, The Last of Us. Oh yeah, just bearded guy and bearded uh... guy with a pipe. He throws <laughs> his little he throws his little daughter at the enemies. Yeah, is that his daughter, or is that just what's her name, Ellie? Matthews? That's that's his uh, that's his hoe in the game. <laughs> when you get lonely against the zombie apocalypse, you just you gotta go for what you can find. Well, that's what I'm actually excited about that potential. That would be a great game concept. Yeah. Try, trying to molest the last little girl on Earth. <laughs> well, I I'm legit. And the Last of Us is his pickup line. It's like we might as well. The Last of Us. Yeah. You, oh. me, whatever. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a but you, yeah. me, and my dirty, dirty dick. Because <laughs> there's no showers. There's just plants <laughs> and, and mutants. Yes. Uh, my tiny detergent penis. That would be so great to turn on your video game and you pick up from your last save and just have the first thing you hear, my penis. Ain't nothing to do but drink and fuck, and I'm all out of drink. But I do have a real dirty penis. <laughs> uh, indeed. But one Something to need you to piss on it! What? <laughs> and then there is a mini game using the PlayStation Move, where you direct the squatting stream onto the penis to clean it from being oh. dirty from the apocalypse. <laughs> it is supposed to be uh, kills germs or something. Urine. It's, urine right? is very sterile. They would drink it on ships to ward off the scurvy. Hmm. Seems That's weird. What you're still. gonna have to do. You're going to have to get a little girl to piss in your mouth so that you don't get scurvy. That's what he tells her anyway. The last... Is there music to that minigame? Or is it like yeah. bleak and stark? Or is it like no, Mario Party? There is very bleak emotional music. It goes... Ooh, ha, ha. Ooh, ha, ha. Sail away! Sail away! Sail away! <laughs> that would be truly a troubling video game. It well, be about breaking, breaking boundaries. That's breaking what, boundaries. What we so. do in video games, as a developer, as you guys are as well, mm. we try and break down the walls uh, of emotion and the human condition. And I mm. think what can be more connecting than a little girl pissing in an old man's <laughs> mouth? <laughs> to the tune of... Uh, 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 flow by... The lovely Enya. Yeah, it is Enya, isn't it? It is Enya, yeah. <laughs> if anyone would survive a zombie apocalypse, it would be Enya and her lasting music that withstands the course of time and human trial. It's over 20 years old now, I think. That's that's some 1992-ish type stuff, isn't it? Oh, that that is some baller 1992 shit. Yeah, it's some good stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you brought it up. 
Uh, I was sincerely interested, though, in them taking that game in that direction where she has to be kind of freaked out by this weird bearded man with a gun who's like all she's got. That would be a good creepy twist if he started to get weird on her. They probably won't do it, though, because it's... um, I don't know. Makes you feel bad. I don't know if that game is going to be and disturbing for a video game concept. <laughs> why did you say it like that? <laughs> well, why would anyone actually do that? <laughs> Who in the right mind would do that? Joseph Fritzel. Fritzel? Oh yeah. I don't get the reference. That's a historical. Joseph Fritzel. Everyone's it's... favorite. Yeah, he's bad. I. Uh... Okay. He's like a Mengele-ish. He kept the he kept the girl in the oh thing. Oh, it yeah, was right. basically what I'm guessing was the inspiration for The Last of Us. Hey, we should make a game based off that dude. Let's start a Kickstarter. We should <laughs> Kickstarter. Is that going to keep happening? Is Kickstarter just going to keep happening? Because it's, it's not. time for it to not. We got like nine emails all about the same Kickstarter for a game that, you know, the first one, if we saw the first email and we wanted to talk about it, sure. But people have, have it ingrained in their mind, like, if I just tell you I want to do something enough, then you'll just pay me to do it. It's like this new philosophy that uh, makes the world less fun to be in sometimes. I'm glad it works when people are... Uh, have a really great idea and politely ask you once to back it up, but but it's getting pretty demanding at this point. It's too much. We had fourteen emails for that one game the other day. Fourteen emails that? for that kip. I'm not saying its name. No. Fuck it. It's like- in those in those cases. I feel like the creator of the game like got on the forum or on the Kickstarter page was like, "Hey, you should hit up all these websites to try to get them to talk about all right, my game," and essentially it just turned into spamming. Which is doesn't it works against them? Like Absolutely. we don't want to ever talk about your game publicly when we're getting bombarded by the same goddamn thing over and over, and we don't even think your game looks that good. Yeah, yeah if we thought it looked good, we'd talk about it. But it feels like they're trying to tell us how to do our work, which is always kind of disrespectful. Well, it was the like. same again with that. Again, I'm not going to say its name, but there was this website they were trying to get us to promote that was. Oh, yeah, that was funny. Oh, just really patronizing emails. Just, oh, maybe you were waiting for someone to write the story for you. <laughs> like, no, we don't know who you are, and you... We don't care about your yeah. products. You yeah. could, Our audience doesn't care about your product. You could live forever or die tomorrow. It makes no fucking difference. And it was a, it was a story about a semi-competing website, like a place to meet other gamers and be friends and stuff, which is kind of what... We do in our chat and our community and our forum and our, our community blogs. I don't know why we'd want to promote them. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, the world's weird. It makes me feel troubled. There's, a, I'm troubled. I don't know if you. Can oh, tell you know, you know what I actually love are the oh, websites yeah. that send us their reviews. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what are we gonna do with that? <laughs> Nothing. So read it. I. No, they want to like, post it, right? Yeah, I mean, that makes sense for something like Kotaku or CVG or whatever. Those sites will, like, take other people's web uh, reviews and, like, like do a post about it, like, like some, like, list. But we don't do yeah. that. Franken review, I think they call them. No, we've never I mean, done that. I kind that. of like that as a concept, but I would never solicit someone for the reviews. Like, I'm, I'm grateful that CVG and um, uh, VG24-7 uh, and sometimes Kotaku, like, will do that. Because it's cool, you know, get... get our reviews talked about and, and posted, but I wouldn't go and ask them to do it. It's like I wouldn't expect anyone to present my review like like it was news. I can't mm. imagine the overwhelming arrogance. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a, more of a desperation from them. I mean, they really just want to be us and have a big blog. So why not ask? They're thinking that's how you make. God, it we're so great. <laughs> we're, we're, we're fairly popular, I think. Yes. Uh, did you sign any autographs at PAX East, Tomza? I don't. I got recognized. I don't think uh, anyone asked me for my autograph. I'm not as popular as you. I'm, I'm going to ask you for your autograph, Hamza. Oh, Will nice. you draw? A I mean, in the past, I have. That's, yeah. that's a really cool feeling. Yeah, yeah. It's neat. It's weird. It's. Uh, I, I've. I can't remember if I talked about it before, but this beautiful woman at PAX East. With an even even more beautiful guy with her, he is this like six foot two Asian man with like amazing hair and perfect pants. Just a supermodel shows up. 
Did you did did you, were you there for this Hamza or did I tell you about this already, Jim? I don't. What are you talking about? Keep telling us about the pants. Yeah, his pants were like you know how there's pants and then there's pants. It's like whoa. Yeah. What does those pants cost? He was wearing pants like that. Oh. Those denim, denim jacket. This is a fashion. <laughs> it's crazy. It's like what? He's probably he's probably in his twenties. He's like a, a young handsome man with this beautiful young woman. And they come up to me, and she's like, can I take a picture with you? I'm like, <laughs> of course. Can I take a picture with you and your handsome friend? Why Why would you want to talk to me? She's like, you're my hero. You're like my idol. I'm like, I have the, this is the little woman. This is the cute little five-foot-two beautiful Asian woman talking. Why would I ever be a beautiful Asian woman's idol? I still don't know. I don't know why you're impressed by that. I say that every day. I am <laughs> naked and crying at the time while I say it, but... I tell you, say that you are my idol every day, and I've made an idol of you out of my poo. (laughs) Anyway, Holmes, Jonathan, I'm actually a bit annoyed with you. Oh, you're kidding. What did I do wrong? Actually, I'm fucking furious. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Because I was stood outside of a Buffalo Wild Wings on Saturday night for an hour. Okay. On Saturday. Mm -hmm. So I was already in a bad mood. Because yeah. for some reason, some friends had invited us to watch the UFC fight, which I've got no fucking interest in. I didn't realize that was the pretense until I was there. Um, we didn't get in. We ended up going to a bar and do karaoke. But I was sat outside, and we were talking about American gladiators. Okay, mm-hmm. And then I got really annoyed with you. Me? Yes. What did I do? We have never done American gladiators. You and <laughs> I have never tried to revive American <laughs> gladiators on national television, and I'm pissed off. That you have not suggested it sooner. It got revived not that long ago, like maybe five years ago with Hulk Hogan. I mean, pretty recent. Came back already. The Hogan defense is no excuse here. (laughs) I know it's one of your classic defenses, but that you're not getting out of it. You and I, right? And Uh don't worry, Hamza. You are the referee. Oh. That you're lucky. That's we, a fun job. We are going to do American Gladiators, right? It's going to be called The Tough Men, colon, American Gladiators, right? <laughs> Just you and me? You're cottoned on. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> Every week, it's you and me competing in trials of aggression and strength, right? We've even got names. I'm going to be called Muscle Bastard, and you are going to be called Fruit Loops. <laughs> That's not a good name. Why? <laughs> Why what going? is more formidable than Fruit Loops? Nothing. Right. So every week, you and I are going to do challenges of aggression while Hamza, right, paints his torso black and white like stripes, wow. has a net and a triton and just stands between us the whole time going, yeah, yeah, like that, right? You and I are going to get cobras, live cobras, hold them by their tails and start whipping them at each other. For about half an hour. Like whipping them like a whip or throwing them at each like other? A, like a whip. It's going to be cobra combat. Wow. So that we're whipping the head part of the cobra at each other. At each other. It's like... That's really dangerous. It's the deadliest prey. Who is the prey? Me? Fruit Loops? <laughs> <laughs> I feel, feel like we're both prey. We're both just going to get killed by cobras. No, because then how would we do it next week? You're not <laughs> thinking this through, Holmes. Obviously, we're going to survive because we, we'll get contracted for six episodes to start with and then a following 22-episode run if the first six rate well. Mm. I've got this all planned out, unlike you, with your, oh, we will die. That's a stupid plan. I, I, it's not a plan. I was worried, but you're right. I can't think of a time when someone got a, got a show and then died. Yeah, everyone survives who gets a show. Because otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do next week dishwasher soap slalom. What? Right. We get those little bricks of soap that you put in dishwashers. Those little like soapy tablets, right? Oh sure, yeah. yeah? Cascade, sure. Yeah. We eat fifty of those each. <laughs> oh. No. And then take turns punching each other in the stomach. That's the worst. No, it's we'll not. So it's not. It's not the worst because heroin roulette is next week. <laughs> That's the follow-up where we just take turns sharing a rusty needle, and the last man standing is the winner. 
<laughs> the whole time you've been describing it, I've had. In the, in oh yeah, the, that's gonna head. play over the song. whole thing, over and over on repeat, and it's gonna be a man making the noise with his mouth like that. In fact, we might just sample that. I'll cut that out of Podtoid and play that on a loop while we share a rusty needle injecting the heroin. <laughs> I'm just eating bricks of soap and like eating throwing bricks up of soap. And slowly just. Am I? Am I still yelling? Yeah! Oh yeah! yeah. Throughout that, cheering, throughout the cheering. entire half an hour. You will be, yeah, thing. poking at us with the trident. Cool. Can I throw the net at you guys? You can, basically what happens, whoever loses, you throw the net at them, and then you just kick the shit out of them. <laughs> so what do you reckon, Holmes? You up for this? Uh, it's called The Toughest Man. The Toughest Man, colon, American Gladiator, <laughs> so they know it is part of the canonical series. Uh, it's just me, you, and Hamza, and some soap, heroin, and cobras for the first three episodes. Yeah, and I, I know what you're like, right? Yeah. I know you've got problems, because you're going to be saying things like, oh, cobras are dangerous. I, yeah. I don't have anything to follow that up with, <laughs> but I'm just saying that we should do it. How long do you want each episode to be? I mean, they're going to be like five minutes long before we end up in the hospital. Well, that won't do very well, because we've got ratings and advertisers to think about, so you're going to be on your feet for half a fucking hour, son. (laughs) Doing heroin just nonstop with a rusty needle for a half hour. No, that's that's episode three. We've got to build up to that. We'll be doing Cobra. We won't survive that long. (laughs) I have spent spent literally five minutes coming up with Cobra Castlevania. Thank you very much. That would be a really cool video game, actually. Why has anyone done that? Wow. Great idea. People in the audience, I'm so spoiled by uh, Podtoid's amazing community that makes fan art and video games and stuff about us that I just immediately thought someone will now make Cobra Castlevania. Just one level. Just make it. Someone out there is Game Maker. What what are you imagining Cobra Castlevania to be? Is it just Simon Belmont, Belmont with a whip, but instead of the whip, it's a Cobra? That, that would be fine. Yeah, it would be so cool to just whip it. and then The, the, the problem is, it's no one's going to have that idea until we give them the proof of concept, which will be you and me in y fronts on a rickety three-legged stool over a warehouse concrete floor full of broken glass. While we're not even in the, the glorious... Us with a trident. <laughs> we're, we're not even in the spectacular and well-furnished, beautiful futuristic American Gladiator set we're just in a, a warehouse no I've actually picked out a warehouse and don't worry I have already spray painted America's Gladiator <laughs> on the wall in black paint so that I know we, we are serious and morbid in what we do we are very serious and bleak and gritty it's true won't the cobras bite us when we go to grab them by their tails I've thought about that and yeah. my answer is probably not <laughs> I mean, the idea Uh, is to get uh, the Cobras to bite each other. I'm sure if we just keep swinging them around and then lashing them out like Indiana Jones, then they should bite on instinct the other person, which is obviously the objective, so that Hamza can throw his net. They're going to be so mad, those Cobras. I mean, that's really... Well, I should think so. I wouldn't want to be swung around and thrown at another man in his wife runs. By the tail, man. I actually feel bad for the cobras right now instead of myself, who will die. You're just, you're just saying like that's hey, good. That keeps you focused. You. Don't worry about your own mortality because that won't make for good television. You, you do. You often just tell me you're going to kill me on this show. <laughs> yeah. You say it in a roundabout way. That's fun, but the message is I will kill you, my friend. And I just have to be like, okay. What is love if not a poison? Mm. I'm not going to poison you. You're not? Not, not until episode four when we do anthrax <laughs> snowballing. Uh, well, you know, That'll be a good competition for E3, actually, um, Hamza and Jonathan Holmes. How much yeah. poison do you think we could all drink? That's, in a way, something that comes up every year. People get drunk at that. Yeah. You're fading away like quiet. 
What? Maybe I'm just not talking loud enough. How's there that? you go. That's better. I think I was just getting emotional. So anyway, I'm going to sign a contract with the oh television God. if you're up for it. I, you know, it's so bad. It's the worst idea for my health. It would make good television. I admit it would make it. fucking fantastic television. I would watch it. I would watch that show, but I don't want to die at all. Not even a little. I'm like the one of the least suicidal people I know. So it's hard for me to Think sign up. Think of the merchandise. I, <laughs> hoodies that are like flesh colored with like six packs, like our six packs um, printed on the front of the hoodie and on the arms, like bite marks and needle track marks and things. And then on the back tattooed America's toughest. <laughs> no one no one wants to wear a hooded sweatshirt that makes them look like they've been bitten by cobras and or have been doing heroin for a half hour. No one wants that. Uh, I've just raised my hand, so that proves you're wrong on that count. We could sell rubber cobras, and the kids who will be well into our show can like whip each other in the eyes with those. <laughs> we would get sued. We would get in so much trouble no, that we were encouraging I, kids. I, I, oh, the rubber cobras, though. Yeah, but we'd be encouraging children to, like, this is a toy you use to hit your friends with it hard. In the you, know, exactly, you could take any toy and whip your friend with it yeah. really hard. And we're not going to like tell them to do that. There's just going to be a drawing on the packaging of a kid whipping another kid in the eye and then in very small letters... Uh, an asterisk, and probably don't try this written on it. So, I think we're legally covered, and if not, who's going to sue a couple of guys in intensive care? Only a heartless monster. Yeah, and there's no no heartless monsters out there. People are very no, nice. There's just pretty nice. nice people, and men who want to fight their friends with snakes. <laughs> That's it. And we're we've got something to offer because we do stand out. We are different. Yeah. You're different. I'm also gonna be different, I guess. It's, when you're it's done. pretty brave as well. And girls like bravery. So we could be swimming in da pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it worth getting bitten by a cobra and overdosed on heroin and the other things I said? <laughs> in order to be knuckle deep in Tuna Town. It. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Tuna Town. Does any woman want to be known as Tuna Town? <laughs> it's called Tuna Town, guys. I, I want to make a shirt that's like an open can of tuna with just like a fist in it. And that's it. <laughs> it's so awful. <laughs> knuckle deep. Don't say no. awful. Women are beautiful creatures, just sexist. They are. I, I, I don't. Mm. There is a, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I get flustered. It's true. I do. I do. Um, I was thinking about a new segment for the show. Maybe it's too much work, though, but you guys are on Twitter a lot. Hamza's on it a ton, looking for video game news. Um, and you're on there a lot, Jim. I'm on there a little bit. You read stuff on Twitter. It's pretty good. Um, and we have particular tastes, so it would be different from the other the other people who do it. You think we should point out the best thing we read on Twitter every week? Is that a thing to do on the show? Okay. Yeah. 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 Let's let's say we'll do it, and then we won't because we forgot. Yeah. <laughs> well, not... Hums has got it already. Nailed down the principal <laughs> point of the show. I told you, fit in perfect. Yeah, it's it's generally a detour concept too. Yeah. Yeah. That's how we yeah. Do. That's how um, we roll. I think someone on Twitter named Eminem's underscore and titties with a Z, who's a woman, uh, a good-looking woman, actually, started following me. I have no idea why she would follow me. All of her uh, tweets Is are... Is she good-looking? Did you say she's good-looking? Yeah, she's good-looking. Let's be in love with her. I'm sort of in love with her. I'm, okay. in, I'm in love with a lot of people uh, in a sort of platonic, weird... Uh, we should fall in love with her and just like send her messages that say, crying, comma, thinking of you. <laughs> Slash, <laughs> knuckle deep, and tuna. <laughs> <laughs> well, she talks a lot. I read a bit of her feed, and a yeah. lot of it is just, you know, he gives good head, and then hashtag a keeper. Like that sort of thing. That's all right. Yeah, I liked her. I send, think her a, send her a text message saying it's all gone wrong, and then send it to her again two hours later. Girls love it. 
that could be another segment is me giving you because I mean you know I'm something of a Lothario and mm-hmm. and you are unlucky in love it's just that's part of your whole personality that we find endearing um, it's kind of true I've, I've been dumped a lot yeah oh you, you, you're pathetic so I we am. could give you <laughs> I could give you love advice and that's my first love advice uh, is send a woman a text message that says it's all gone wrong her name was Eminem and titties by the way so, yeah. And uh, some guy, I think it was Ramstring, who's a uh, Twitter guy who's on Destructoid a lot, he retweeted a 15-year-old who was really angry at him, who said something along the lines of, Shut up, sexist prick, you dick so small, no woman want to get, and this is one word, cunt destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> but destroyed being a, a zero, you know, for... Yeah, to keep it, to keep it clean and pg-13 <laughs> yeah yeah she's i'm so glad this this she's 15 she's like a 15 year old pretty blonde girl um i'm so glad that she thinks and she's that. she's annoyed at the man who can't yeah, destroy sexist. her cunt yeah no no woman want to get her one word cunt destroyed by yo dick i think it said but the it's... the end game for this girl is to eventually get her cunt destroyed. <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. Yeah, that's that's uh, the name of the game these wow. days. So I immediately. So that's where I've been going wrong. I haven't gone up to women and say I'm going to eradicate your vagina. <laughs> I'm going to erase it from yeah. existence. Yeah, I guess that's. What's up <laughs> your that. pussy yeah. is going to look like Auschwitz. <laughs> I'm going to do experiments oh. on you. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> On your sweet oyster. Oh. <laughs> I, I am gonna sew. <laughs> I'm gonna cut Siamese twins in half and sew them back together inside Dadus! Is that how you um, seduce women, Jonathan? Maybe you do. That's that's why I'm so happy about her. So I. Because she, she seemed to think like you in a way. So I immediately told her, You are great. Let's be friends. And she said, No. <laughs> Sorry, love, but thanks for the offer and did, like, tons of smiley faces. So she, and then she was, like, totally polite to yeah, me and she, called me love. She probably thought you were a pedophile. Probably, probably. And I immediately sent her an episode of Talking to Women about video games where I talked to an old German woman, and I'm like, you sure you don't want to be friends with me? And she said no. But she kept calling me love. I guess that's the other thing you do. When you're mad at someone, you say stuff like cunt destroyed, and when you like someone, you call them love. No, what she didn't like me. She was just being polite. I don't know. I'm still trying to work it out. Maybe you guys can. Yeah, I think know. the general rule of thumb is don't talk to 15 year olds on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I am uh, quite bold. Yeah, I'm uh, willing to maybe look terrible a lot because I know that I mean well, and I just hope that that comes across. Um, and I haven't talked to her since or anything. We're not friends after all. It's too bad, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I could have been, you know, hearing that kind of stuff every day. But anywho, yeah, so we'll do that segment. We just did it. Congratulations. We did one. It turned out pretty well. Yeah, good start. Uh, yeah. You want to talk about more video games? I've always got more on my mind. We talk about some video games. That Jasper Byrne is fucking ridiculous. Yeah, he's going to be on Sub Homes this Sunday, finally. Yeah, I mean, he feels guilty about making a profit on his fucking game. To back, uh, back up, uh, Jasper Byrne, not famous yet. Hopefully he'll be famous soon. One-man development team for Lone Survivor. Just hit Steam. It's a survival horror game that Jim reviewed. He gave it a 9. Uh, he did the music, too. I was reading a review uh, interview with him, because I don't know that much about him. I've only played his games. He did everything on that game. The graphics, the sound design, the writing. And the more he made the game... And the more his life like fell apart, because all he did for the past four years is work on this game and didn't make any money, the more he started to be able to make it autobiographical, because his life was like someone who was living in survival horror. Like, yeah. I guess he really had to limit himself to one cup of coffee a day, or else he would completely freak out with like an anxiety attack and stuff. Just like you do in the game. If you drink too much coffee in the game, you you go a little nuts. Uh, but anyway, you were saying about him, Jim. Yeah, I mean, this guy, like you said, put everything he had into the game. Um, was selling that limited edition 
um, the first aid edition of Lone Survivor, which is fifty dollars, you get like a whole bunch of digital content and a signed art print. Um, and he was saying how guilty he felt that the game is almost—it's um, not even profitable. Well, it wasn't when he <laughs> made the blog; it wasn't even profitable yet. But he said it soon will be, uh, or it's no, no, not even that. It might be soon. So I feel guilty now, and I'm—he he doesn't want to do any more first aid editions or anything. Because um, he feels bad that he's making more money than he needs to survive, which I thought was ridiculous. So I went, yeah. I straight away went and bought a first aid edition, even though I've mm-hmm. got the game. And then he went, he said, "You are too generous. I could have given you one." And I'm like, "But that's not the point." Yeah, he said the same thing to me. I, I, uh, I bought one when the first day it came out. Um, he is I'll not take a free me. one. <laughs> I'll give you his email, obviously. He'll send you one. He's a very nice guy. I don't know him from a hole in a while, but we've corresponded on email a couple of times, and he's been very nice throughout. Um, and he's always made free games prior to this, so it was really like a philosophical struggle for him, from what I gather, uh, to actually ask for money for something he made. And I can see where he's coming from. It's great to not have it be about money and have it only be about self-expression, but... At the same time, he did something that's that's worth four years of a human life, and you know, in a, they just made that movie about that with uh, what's that good-looking guy with the hair and a, he does a dance move and shoots a gun. Willem Dafoe. Yep. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. <laughs> My point is that time is um, worth more than anything else, and he put all his time into this because he wanted to. But at the same time, the game is a reflection of the time he spent and the energy and the, the the humanity he put himself into this game. It's definitely worth. If money is worth anything, then then it's worth that. If anything is worth anything, it's um, the stuff of uh, humanity in a game. It's amazing. It's a good game. You played yet, Hamza? I have no idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought so. Uh. Yeah, I'll get you. I'll get you in touch with him. I'm sure he'll send you. No, 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 no. I don't. Want, I I feel like an asshole now after the way you guys are talking about him. Oh no, no. Uh, he, he wants to share his games bad, and if you're not going to buy it, then he'll just send you one. What is the game like? Uh, give me like the premise in a minute. You want to do it, Jim? Um, Silent Hill 2D. Mm. In fact, uh, he did the Silent Hill D makes. Yeah, but uh, that that's that's accurate if you like Silent Hill. I haven't ever really loved Silent Hill, to be honest. I uh, I love the premise of Silent Hill two and three. Um, playing them, I've never really enjoyed the, the the act of playing them. I'd just as well watch someone play them just to see what happens. Uh, whereas Lone Survivor, you really, I really felt involved while I was playing it. It's really engaging from a gameplay perspective. So um, it's worth checking. I'm a- I'm the same way as you, Holmes. I've uh, I've never got into Silent Hill series. I mean, I like the concept, especially two and three. Especially in two, how you have Pyramid Head and how he fucks everything. It really <laughs> reminds me of me, in a way. I, I like mean, fucking everything. You are. You are a guy who's out on the streets. But I've never seen you... <laughs> I've never seen you having sex. That sounds terrible. No, it's, you know, I mean that uh, in the best a, possible I've way. never seen you having sex with anyone. I've never seen But it. you are out on the street. You make him sound like Jack the fucking Ripper. He's <laughs> <laughs> just the cool guy, you know? He's just out there just seeing what happens. He's just out there curb crawling and killing prostitutes. He's such a cool dude. <laughs> Oh, I didn't mean any offense, Hamza. You know that. You know that I, I love you in why your ways. Do, why do you hate me so much? I love you a lot, which I... is the truth. God, I hope Jim rapes you. <laughs> <laughs> Will people stop using the R words? I'm not going to do that. I, I love it. The sex is bum. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was waiting for the caveat to say that it will be consensual. but Exactly, you... that's what it is. I'm not sure it is because I don't Once want... it starts, you'll get used to it. <laughs> is that the new consensual? Yeah. <laughs> get, get over it, Jonathan. This is just, just about you. I'm not saying this about anyone else. This is just about you. Just, just imagine it as a really long and annoying prostate exam from Jim. Yeah. 
that's not the selling point. You have not got <laughs> like, you interested. know, you know when they do a prostate exam and they stick a like a cheeky finger just up your like bottom up your little mm. up your little hole, right? <laughs> and then uh, all spunk shoots out the end of the doctor's finger. It's like that. <laughs> Penis finger, doctor. Yeah. Yeah, is and then and then and then the doctor, who is English, fat, naked, and sweaty, like pulls his finger out and then pin like spins you around and pins you down by your shoulders and does deep kissing with you, and then like you can like taste the the Jack Daniels in his on his tongue, and then he just whispers in your ear just <laughs> like that, and then falls asleep on top of you. It's just like any regular prostate exam. That's just like any trip to the doctors. Yeah. That's true. He falls asleep on you and then just like does farting all night. <laughs> That's pretty romantic in a clinical way. In a clinical way. The clinical romance is what that movie would be called. Yeah, where... that is a song I have sung about you. It goes, we could have a clinical romance a la Lady Gaga. <laughs> I've never heard that song before. Thank you for singing that. Clinical Thanks. romance, finger up your bum. <laughs> oh, indeed. That'll get some fan art, I'm sure. There's fan art of me and Walmart shaking my ass in, like, tight <laughs> uh, shorts. Like, the, what are the booty shorts, I think they're called? Whereas you are just wearing a, um, I hate to use the term, but wife beater. Uh, wearing sunglasses, looking at my ass. Have you seen that fan art yet, Jim? I have. I I found it quite delightful. Yeah, I'm happy. It, I'm happy it's out there. Thanks, guys. And people did. Several people did drawings of you with ostrich arms and ostrich leg arms. I've got three. If there's more out there, and please do email me at um, podtoid at destructoid dot com or jonathan at destructoid dot com just to get your your full names, the artists who did those, because I have a friend who wants to make websites. Yeah. She might make the me a thing website. is though. It's going to be the whole website. I, I don't want people to do that anymore. Oh. No. Okay. I want you... <laughs> right? <laughs> I want a drawing of you, Jonathan Holmes, right? Mm-hmm. Naked. Oh, right? With a, with a goose. A goose's head and neck coming out of your mouth, right? What? Two little goose head and necks coming out of where your eyes normally would be, right? Oh. One out the end of your knob and one out of your bum. No, three out of your bum. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, and 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 you are called von von Goose. <laughs> von von Goose. Jonathan von von Goose. <laughs> that is the drawing I want people to do of you. That is the worst. Uh, that is. I, I would like to idea. suggest a change. Oh, by all means, this is an open forum. Instead of the goose coming out of his knob, can his knob just be the goose? Yes. Oh. Goose knob, yeah. Yeah. All right, perfect. That's yucky and sad. <laughs> and when people Google search, you know, oh, Donald <laughs> Holmes is looking for a job. I wonder what he's like. <laughs> you know, and, oh, trying to change careers, guys. Getting old, can't do the same old stuff anymore. Oh, let's see what Jonathan Holmes has done for this life. Oh, people are drawing pictures of him with a goose penis. Let's hire this guy. He's he's not weird. He doesn't have a weird life. He won't freak us all out. There- <sighs> Ruined. There's nothing wrong with Jonathan's goose penis. <laughs> I hope that employers in the future are as progressive as you are, Jim. We'll see. I'm very progressive, aren't I? You are quite progressive. I I'm don't think others it. have, and by proxy, I don't think the rest of the human race has progressed to where you are quite yet. So it makes oh, it. Yeah. Hard. I, I think society at large needs to play catch up with uh, the rather liberal. An open-minded Jim Sterling, who has no problem with the fact that Jonathan Holmes has a goose for a penis. <laughs> <laughs> and geese are jerks, too. I mean, that's an insult to my body, in a way. Because they're really mean. They're Have great. Have goose? They're not polite. They're great. They're fucking wankers. They hiss, they bite, they nip. They just sit around in the middle of the, the street, just like, yeah, whatever. They don't Can't... take shit. Geese don't no. take shit. Not from cars, not from other geese, not from me, not from my cats. Yeah, man. I spent most of my years in college sat on a bench in a park looking at geese. I know what I'm talking about. I'm something of an expert. 
<laughs> Did I tell you about that friend of mine who would feed geese and ducks chicken McNuggets just to make them be cannibals? He's a horrible person. Yeah. He's oh, a- oh. So my parents have a farm, and we used to have chickens on the farm. Um, and you know they would lay eggs, and we we would eat their eggs. So for a while there, I was on a health kick where I wouldn't eat the the egg yolks. Mm. But instead of just throwing the egg yolks away, and you know like other like discarded food. We would take all that food and feed it back to the chickens. So I was feeding the chickens their children. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How'd you feel when you did that? Tom I, I, I left. You laughed or you left? Or you laughed no, and I, left? I, I laughed. You laughed and then you yeah. left. Yeah. No, I mean, I stayed and watched a little. <laughs> it is a, a prank. To feed someone's oh, yeah. fetus to someone, yeah. No, that's a that's a total prank. Yeah, the, <laughs> that those, classic those, goof. Those chickens are gonna laugh about it later. <laughs> they probably don't know the the rules of animals, as I've learned through um, Jesse Lynn and Will, who are two of Pod Toy's biggest fans, and also hey, I, I like consider them one. friends. Yeah, they're our friends now. We met. Yeah, she's cats. really cool. Yeah, and, and uh, Will is really cool too. They're they're a couple, I believe. She taught me all about whether pedophilia is okay in the animal kingdom. She does the pedophilia questions more than anyone at this point. And also uh, one to grow on. She'll teach you a little thing or two about pedophilia along the way. It's nice. Oh, life. I pretend to be okay with it, but I'm actually secretly miserable. I'll be, I'll be all right, though. You guys want to talk what about video? What the fuck is wrong? I'm okay. Don't worry about it. I feel no, great. No, what? No, I'm fine. Just I'm fine. don't like, say a statement like that and like brush it off. I'll that, be okay. That's really brought the podcast down, and we were having such okay. no, PG-13 fun. I feel really good now. I'm really ready to make this show the best show it's ever been with my upbeat, fun-loving attitude. Let's talk about video games. Oh, my God. Hamza? Are yeah. you excited for Pikmin 2 new play control? On no, the I don't give a console? shit. What do you mean? That's not out yet? <laughs> I thought we're picking things up, and then you just bring it back down even more. We're talking about fucking Pikmin for a goddamn <laughs> week. We talked about Pikmin last week, and boy, was it a hit. People were t- 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 tweeting all about my Pikmin talk. So excited for Pikmin kids today. And now Pikmin 2 new play control is, is coming to the Wii console in June. According to Nintendo Power, Hamza. Fuck yeah, that. ten years too late. Holy fuck! Did it take forever to come re-release that? <laughs> I did think you were going to say that. I have to admit, I, I said that on purpose to get your reaction. I enjoy it. I enjoy it when you're negative and um, and so honest. You're so brutal with your honesty, Hamza. But yeah, I'm excited. I love. Wow. Fans. Okay, I see what you just did there. You were feeling miserable. Mm-hmm. So you want to turn it around by making me miserable, oh, no, thus no, making you happy no, no, with no. my misery. No, far from, Hamza. I enjoy Hamza. You are the Grinch that stole Pikmin. <laughs> no, I enjoy Hamza. And you want, if you want some Hamza, you got to give him something to chew on a little bit. You have to tell him something that sucks so he can say that sucks. And then you get some Hamza out of it. Feels good. And you weren't miserable right just then, were you? Were you really sad? No, not really. You're having fun ripping on Pikmin, even though I love it. I'm, I'm like, I, legitimately excited about it. I don't hate it. It's I mean, I can't favorite. get into it, but... Um, Maybe you'll like it. Maybe you'll like the new one. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. Why would I like the new one after anything like the old ones? Uh, the controls, Hamza. <laughs> Woohoo! Motion controls! <laughs> it's actually uh, more pointer controls, which I like. You like pointer controls. You like pointing. <laughs> There's a there. Don't you love pointing? Well, motion controls is uh, waggling around or having to move, which sucks sometimes. Uh, pointer controls is precision. Like, uh, like It's almost as good as mouse and keyboard. Point and click. No, don't ever say that. It is. It's almost as good, Hamza. Oh, it's... No. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to be different from Hamza. And then you get to get the have something to talk to him about. It's great. If we, uh, we like the same stuff, it would be so boring. Um... Anyway, yeah, Nintendo really is releasing that. Uh, it's been out in Europe for three years, like you said, Jim. Oh, uh, Pikmin 2 fuck New Play off. Control. Yeah. Fuck off. That's it's... all I've got to say. About. I, I, will, <laughs> I will review that game, and it will just say fuck off. <laughs> Nintendo of America finally decided to bring it out now. You yeah. can't even call it New Play Control. That's disingenuous from the start. 
Just call yeah, it Pikmin it. shit pillow. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it'll cost fifty bucks too. It might. They probably will. Not <laughs> Nintendo. It might. You never know. The other the other new play control games I think were thirty, but but there's oh, nothing. Okay. Well, but that's when they were competing against themselves with games like, you know, Mario Galaxy 1 and 2. And there was actually Nintendo putting out Wii games then, so they... Oh, they that's had right. Try- they have nothing now, so... Right. Since they have nothing, they know the Wii audience is probably desperate. They've got Xenoblade Chronicles. A lot of people are already finishing that up. they got Last Story coming out sometime. But other than that, I don't think... They haven't even announced if uh, Fatal Frame 2 remake, which I'm pretty excited about. It's coming out in the United States or not. But we're definitely getting Pikmin 2 new play control. Thank fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do enjoy you gentlemen. New play control. I'm I'm legitimately excited about it. Like, Tell I, you what, though. I really want to go ahead. It. Oh, no, 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 please, you. No, I was going to say, if we want to talk about something where we all could be happy sure. in regards to, like, a new Nintendo game. Uh-huh. It's Kirby's 20th anniversary collection. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What yeah that's basically the noise I made when they uh, revealed that. And they didn't say shit. They just said it's going to be a compilation of Kirby games. And we don't even know what Kirby games. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, uh, for all we know, it could just be everything from Kirby's Superstar Ultra plus, uh, like, the last two Wii games and it's done. <laughs> It's oh, just, I doubt they'll even do that. It's just gonna be yeah. it's gonna be the first Game Boy game and two episodes of the anime. <laughs> that would be a real two like real really move. distant episodes part way through as well, so that you can't follow anything. <laughs> Have you noticed how like crazed for Kirby Nintendo's been the past couple of years though? It Kirby's must be, epic yarn. Yeah, he must yeah. be a, must be making them some good money because. They seem to have done pretty decently. and They have. Yeah. They've all sold... Um, I think Return to Dreamland is at around... I think I had read 2 million. And Epic Yarn, I think, got up to like 3 million. But wait, Donkey wait. Kong Country Returns got up to 5 million or more than that. So And they're not churning out Donkey Kong games all the time. So I think it might be more than just money. I think they really want to make uh, Sakurai, the creator of, of Kirby, love Nintendo. Because he's been trying to quit that company forever. And they just keep <laughs> pulling him back in. They, they want him... Please keep making more Smash Brothers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, there was you probably know this one, Hamza, but he didn't know he was making Smash Brothers Brawl. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, Iwata announced, you know, and Sakurai will be helping. <laughs> I've got this image of him with, yeah. <laughs> with a blindfold on, and they've just been forcing him with cattle prods to make a game. <laughs> That's kind then, of how he makes it sound. Like yeah. six months later, they pull the blindfold off. He realizes he's holding in his hands, which he managed to do like without seeing Super Smash Brothers Brawl. He just looks at it and just goes, because it is an M Night Shyamalan twist. And he is like really horrified that they've been forcing him. It's like Hellraiser. Like his he's got barbed wire around his eyes. That's what the blindfold is. And oh. Iwata is like hanging from a meat hook, stitching his own mouth shut. Amazing. They they made a uh... <laughs> That's how I think <laughs> Super Smash Brothers games are made. That's why they're so charming and dainty. They are awfully cute, yeah. The soundtrack's good too. Wow, I really lost what we were talking about. Oh yeah, Kirby Collection. Um I think they have to go all out for the Kirby collection, though. I don't think they can do what they did with the um, Mario anniversary, which was just... Yeah, they can. They're Nintendo. They fucking make as shoddy a job as they want. And Reggie Fisa <laughs> me will stand on a stage at E3 and go, I am a hardcore gamer. <laughs> I, uh, I bet the collection is just uh, Kirby 64. No. And then everyone cries. Uh, <laughs> that was the worst one. I, I, don't I reckon you're going to open the case, there's going to be no disc inside, and they've just written in, like, pink pen Kirby on the inside of the case. <laughs> they will try, because Kirby is not that big of a franchise, so they don't have to worry about... Because what Nintendo worries about with these collections is like, oh, if we give them all in a collection, then we can't sell them for a lot separately, or if we give them a game uh, and a collection that we're also selling at the DS, I mean, on the DS or the 3DS at the same time, we can't make money there. So, so yeah, they'll go back to the Super Nintendo ones and the Nintendo ones and put them all on there, I think. I think so what they're just... going to do is, when you buy it, you don't get a disc. They give you a little ticket with an address on it. And mm-hmm. you follow where the address is. You have to get there yourself. 
and Shigeru Miyamoto will just stab you in the nipples with a protector <laughs> and send you on your way. <laughs> He'll go, you ain't got none of that there, Kirby! Get out of my shed! Because it'll be in a shed. Get out of my shed! I'll stab you in the nipples again! Yeah! <laughs> If you actually picture Miyamoto's mouth with the big smile, you know, and his mouth flapping with that voice coming out, that's actually pretty funny. It's definitely funny. what's going to happen. Um, you know, on a serious note, I'm glad to see it getting some treatment because um, obviously I like Kirby. Uh, sure. He's always been a bit of an underdog as far as Nintendo franchises go, so I'm, it's cool. Like, you know, he's been getting all this attention. Um, I guess uh, it does lead one to wonder exactly why they just totally ignored metroid Mm, yeah a lot of people mention that i think it's as simple as they are waiting for people to forget about other m before they talk about metroid again for a while it's um it's the same one uh when i think uh phil collins came out with an album that was just him being like oh some kind of love some kind of love some kind of love. And then he did make an album for like four years because he needed people to forget that that's who he was uh, because they hated him so much after that. And people hate Metroid. They hate Other M so much. Oh, my God. They hate it so much. People still talk about yeah. it. I don't. I don't, really don't get the hate as far as that goes in Prime. I mean, I couldn't get into him as much as like the, the traditional 2D side-scrollers like Fusion and, and uh, Super Metroid, obviously, is the, the biggest one. Mm, sure. Yeah, well, Other M looked amazing before anyone played it, and then when they played it, it was very different than than it was promised. And the promise is a little strong, but, you know, when you say, this is the follow-up to Super Metroid, this is really, you know, the next part, uh, the continuation to what we did in Super Metroid, and you're going to get to know Samus' story, and we're going to have a ninja, uh, the Team Ninja do the the combats, it's going to be really intricate, and then none of those things actually feel like they happened people are going to be pissed off and of course you know it tried to tell a story in a way that was on the same level as what mass effect tries to do or or yeah except it was japanese developers trying to tell a fucking story they should not do that in that way that's not the language especially when you translate it to to english it's literally and figuratively figuratively not the the language that they speak it would have been good if it was told in like a manga style. No, I don't even mean it's, that. It's actually sense. Other M was in part based on. Yeah, what do you mean? Well, what I mean, like, mean, I mean, look at like, uh, like, I mean, look at even the Ninja Gaiden series. Like the way mm-hmm. they try to tell a story is just always like it always feels half-assed, and it's just I equate it to any of the fighting games by Japanese developers, like Street Fighter or Tekken, where they're trying to tell a story, but it just makes no fucking sense. It's just there for <laughs> fluff. <laughs> I think you can tell a weird story like that, like No More Heroes, for instance, if you don't uh, try to play it. Yeah, up, I like, should have said all Japanese like developers. Experience. Oh, I know. I know. I know what you mean. Um, but in in general, for me, when uh, Japanese developers try to go the big blockbuster route, there's a, a mismatch between kind of the scope and the the budget and the the seriousness of the storytelling and the sometimes totally incomprehensible plot lines and terrible voice acting, which is what... Other M had some good storyline parts. I tried to be somewhat positive, but it was not... I mean, Super Metroid left so much to the imagination and people filled in the blanks in that game with this huge uh, emotional experience um, and the, the ideas of what could have happened in other M where we're through the roof for what people wanted. And then they got kind of a weird robotic Samus who just took orders from a dude that no one really cared about. And then she just got beat up on and, and left. Yeah. Yeah. That some of that stuff, like, like she couldn't use some of her powers until he gave the permission. Like that. Was yeah. Retarded. I, I could see where they were coming from. Like the thing about me and other M is I actually don't hate the ideas but the the way they did it just didn't convey what I think they were trying to say. It kind of failed. Yeah, that's sad. Now I'm sad again. Well, don't oh, worry. Um, I can mm. cheer you up. Yeah? Because we haven't done it for a few weeks. Oh, yeah? But i got a Willem Dafoe movie pitch all lined up. You do? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, Hamza, every week, 
Oh, well, we haven't done it for a while. Um, but every week we pitch a movie for famed Hollywood actor and thespian Willem Dafoe to star in. And he hasn't said yes to any of them yet, but we're hoping that one day he might. He hasn't said no, has he? He hasn't said no. He hasn't said yes. He hasn't indicated he even knows what Destructoid.com is. <laughs> I've been watching interviews with him, hoping he'll give a little, like a little subtle clue to me. Uh, but he's not. So I have no idea how to get a hold of him. Do you? Does he have a talent agency or something? Uh, I, if we had a net and a broken <laughs> bottle, I think we could get him. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. But this one's... All right. <laughs> no. This 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 week's movie is to pick up America's spirit because oh, national patriotism is at an all time low. It is. Yes. Oh. Okay. The economy is still bad. People are poor. Mm. They don't know who to vote for. <laughs> That's hard. We need to pick up American spirits. Okay. With a, with a feel good movie. So this film's called World War Fun. Because nothing gets the American blood pumping more than a good war. That's and true. This, when people think of World War I, they think of, you know, grimy, muddy trenches, mustard gas, a lot of death and, and harrowing humanity, you know? Like the very mm. worst of humanity. Um, so we're going to show it in a bit of a more amusing light. This is gonna oh, be it's the, a World War I movie then. Yeah, but this is going to be the fun side of World War One. World War Fun. It is mostly Willem Dafoe uh, wearing a soldier's uniform, climbing a slide and going down it, going, Wee! War's so fun! For about an hour. No, it's not. You don't... No. Okay. Really? Well, that's for that's the first hour. <laughs> Just How that, many hours up and down. <laughs> So there are okay. slides all over, and sometimes he goes into the other trench, because everyone's just having a laugh. So you've got the entire German side, right? And they're all gay, because <laughs> I, if I've learned one thing from good propaganda films, because that's what this essentially is, is that it's always fun and not offensive to portray a bad guy in a kind of gay way. And Mel Gibson taught me that, um, just so that it's associated with villainy. And evil. Yeah, they did it in Kid Icarus Uprising, didn't they? they? Did, yeah. Yeah. So this is the Kid Icarus Uprising of feel good patriotic film. <laughs> World War Fun is it kind of like Good Morning Vietnam or Patch Adams in that way? It it is like Patch Adams. Okay. In the Willem Dafoe laughs a lot. <laughs> He's just skipping like it's kind of, you know te- you know the Teletubbies. Oh sure, yeah. Yeah, that. But we say that's what World War One looked like. With Willem Dafoe dressed as an American soldier. As an American soldier on slides that are just like really windy, fun ones like Willy Wonka's factory. And he's just going around going, Wee! I'm winning the war! I think it'd be really good. And then you've got all the gay Germans, and in every scene they are in, they pick up a big German sausage, like a bratwurst, and they go, Tschüss! This goes in my mouth! And they put it in their mouth and just go, Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, like that. You just slowly see them eat a sausage, yeah. Yeah, like really like that, like it's a penis, and they're oh, taking right. it off. Oh. And, and just oh. in case the audience, because there's going to be some kids in the audience, because it's a family film, so they might not pick up the humour. So one of the other Germans will go, "Oh, that looks like a penis," and you are sucking it off. <laughs> the the audience talks like that too. <laughs> yeah, it's like Rocky Horror Show, in that. The audience has its own script and they can join in and they can all go, oh, and you get all the little kids doing it. They love it. They all go, oh, and it's like a penis. Aren't you are sucking it off? <laughs> like a little Augustus Gloop, just a sweet little fat German fella. Yeah, so the film is basically an hour of <laughs> Willem Dafoe going around on funny slides Mm-hmm. Then Germans going, oh, I'm eating a sausage like a penis. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at the end, Willem Dafoe's given a medal. They say, well done, you have saved America from the Germans <laughs> and defeated their leader, Osama von Laden. You see what I'm doing there with a clever satirical twist? Uh, I think so. Yeah, and then the credits roll while everyone goes, we love you, we love you, Willem Dafoe, you won the World War and you had fun as well. Let's all sign up for the army. 
Wow. That's so much of what it is. It might go all the way around. And, you know, the, the pain wheel. Because that would be really hard to watch, that movie. I mean, you realize that. Like, it, it, it seems like a more simple concept compared to some of the other ones. But in terms of actually what you'd be putting the audience through, that would be by far the most difficult. Well, it's like a Serbian movie almost. Just him going, ah! And just going down the slide. Yeah, I'm having so much fun. Isn't war great? Ah! And then just Germans doing the old sausage fellatio routine. And there's their music or anything? Is it just that? No. <laughs> okay. There's, there's no music, which, to be honest, makes the scene where they're eating the sausage, which lasts 23 minutes, um, a little awkward. Yeah. Is this, do you hear the sounds of them chewing and stuff like that? They're like gulping, all that stuff? Yeah, yeah they're like, because oh, they're moaning as well, so they're like, ooh, ooh. Ugh. That'd be tough to watch. <laughs> like that. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming the audience will be laughing so hard that they will basically they'll bring the music of mirth. <laughs> that I would, if the movie was like a movie about watching that movie, and you got to see what happens to the audience who is forced to watch it. That yeah. that could turn it into a, a truly, uh, truly topical meta experience jim i'll be honest Mm -hmm. i didn't have a willem dafoe movie (laughs) and panicked at the last minute (laughs) you had one a couple weeks ago that you said this is really good and i'm gonna save it and this whole time i thought this was the one you were you were saving that you were no that was that that one wasn't very good either (laughs) what was that one come on huh well you gotta give us what that one is oh that was just that was willem dafoe playing brendan Fraser while they filmed the mummy it's like it's like they're filming the the movie is about them filming the mummy except the mummy is real and that's, comes to that's life. what they did in shadows of the vampire a great willem dafoe movie have you ever seen that movie no we talked about that the other week oh you gotta see that did movie. did i actually pitch a real willem dafoe movie back? you kind of did he made a movie with John Malkovich, so it's so good because they're both just so creepy. And John Malkovich is the director of Nosferatu, and he's like, "I must make my movie tonight." And then, that's, uh, sorry, hmm? that, that's a fucking fantastic John Malkovich impersonation. I've never done one before. Thank that's you. That's amazing. My first try. And he goes to a castle and finds a real vampire, uh, Max Schreck, played by uh, Willem Dafoe, and he's like, ah, "What are you doing in here?" just like growling and being a jerk and just eating rats and stuff and he's like i'll let you make a movie he's like can i eat a woman he's like sure you can eat a woman just make my movie and then they do it it's a good movie. how are you hamza wow <laughs> that that just happened yeah me and me and jim are used to just it being us two it's been us two for uh few months now so sorry to be rude sometimes you get in a roll there no it's i i had nothing to add i just sat back and enjoyed the ride yeah yeah i know that's uh that's that. often how i felt when um jim and max would start doing uh improv comedy i just sit back and enjoy it's fun it's fun to just yeah. be on a podcast it's, it's it's quite fun when you do it with one other person but then when you're on your own just talking to two other guys on the internet it's kind of sad <laughs> You mean what you're doing right now? Is what kind of... I'm doing is kind of pitiful. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. Yeah, this isn't just for two guys on the internet. This is uh, this is for thousands of people. You're well, on stage. Not right now. really. Thousands it's just for me. This is what I look forward to doing. <laughs> for yourself. Oh, I can't wait to tell them about my funny world war idea, which <laughs> which is funny up until the point where I start saying it and hearing it come out of my mouth. <laughs> And then I realize it's gone very wrong, but I've committed to it and have to keep going. I enjoyed it. It was thought-provoking and That troubling. would be a good movie in, a, in and of itself. I reckon I could make a compelling movie out of an hour and a half of just me talking and realizing it's all gone wrong. <laughs> People could relate. I know, I know how it feels to start talking and then, uh-oh. And you're in trouble. Hmm. Oh, that reminds me. I should let people know that uh, I started talking to the directors of Indie Game, the movie, who we can start pitching these ideas to them. They, um, 
they're uh, <laughs> award-winning directors now, and they are kind of my friends. I think I've only. Do you met think they'd finally? One. Do you think they'd let me do my documentary I want to do on rat on rat fans? I will ask them about that. You never know. They're very open-minded and really, you know, we were talking about Jasper Byrne, creator of uh, Lone Survivor earlier, how he like doesn't notice that he's talented and deserves money and praise and all that stuff at this point. Yeah. The indie game movie people are the exact same way. Uh, I was at a screening of their movie, sold out screening two shows in a row. They packed the house twice. They're out there like telling people where the bathroom is and someone's like, oh, I don't have enough money. They're like, oh, it's all right. It's all right. Just go in, you know, letting people in for free and um, selling tickets out of their pockets. And just uh, with uh, Lee Zan is uh, one of the directors. This old man just came up to her and started talking to her for a long time. And she just tolerated it for like a half hour. And she was trying to sell T-shirts, but he was just like, ah, oh, you're beautiful. And she's like, thank you. Thank you. Like, yeah. You were in the room with that guy in the movie. He must have been really distracted. Because you're beautiful. And she's like, thanks. Yeah, I was making a documentary with him. So, you know, he tried to stay on topic. He's like, no, you didn't. He was thinking about you. I know it. I know it. It was like 20 minutes of that. I felt so bad. Can I make a documentary about that guy? I was so sad that I, because I, I went there to, to film them. And the, my, uh, my uh, video producer hadn't assembled his microphone yet, so he didn't get to videotape any of that, but it was amazing. Um, and she's, you know, these are basically up-and-coming stars in the, um, the world of directing, and they're acting like ushers and, um, and peasants. They're acting like they're st- just still peasants. It's adorable. They're great. So anyway, uh, I told that whole story because... My interview with them hopefully will be up on Detoid's YouTube channel. And we might, uh, we shot a talking to women about video games with Lee Zan as well. I don't know if it turned out good. I haven't watched the footage yet. Maybe, maybe that will go up too. Plugging away already. Yeah. 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 There's a question. Do you reckon we can hmm? get them to make any kind of film? I think that they are open to anything and for whatever reason. Like, you know I'm not a big deal. I am on Destructoid.com. I contribute as much as I can, but I'm not, like, a superstar like you and Max and Tara and other people. But he, the director of the movie is like, you're the one, man. His name's James. He's like, you and Carboni. There needs to be a show called Holmes and Carboni because you guys, you have something. Something special about you guys, and you're going to make it. You're going to be big. He's, like, talking me up all of this. I, he, I don't know where any of this came from. I will from. be very distressed if you find another man to do shows with <laughs> well he's talking about anthony carboni who i uh try to do i don't like with. this director man poisoning the well <laughs> it's it's not gonna ruin what we have going jim i promise i would never leave you i'll be on the show for life as long as you i will me. cut you <laughs> not in a violent way but you know i will do what i need to do to uh, to keep me where you want me? Is that what you're saying? You that makes me sound like a monster. It's to keep you where you should be. <laughs> right, right. Where you think I should be, right? Well, right? I know what's good. <laughs> you said it so nicely. Yeah. All right. Yeah, when you say so it like that, I'm gonna fight. Yeah. This this Anthony Carboni fellow. Mm. I don't like the sound of him, and I don't think you should be hanging out with him. So, don't talk to him again. <laughs> he uh, he lives like a block away from uh, the new Detroit HQ, actually. Yeah, yeah, he's a and he's been. Uh... You know, with Detoid as a fan or as a friend of Detoid for for years now, they he had um, the Destructoid helmet in his game Bite Jacker, which came out a while ago now. For the iOS, oh. yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's a little zombie survival game. It's a cute little game. Is great it, graphics. It, oh, yeah. he he sounds great. <laughs> But I guess we've been at it for, uh, geez, two hours. Oh, you've been at it for two hours with him. Well, that's no, wonderful. Not, I, I, I'm not going to, no, there's nothing. It's safe. nice to know where I stand. 
Oh, dear. We should do more acting, Jim. You really are emotive. You really express yourself. Am I being too quiet? You're all right. Oh, okay, sorry. If if it goes in and out, everyone. I, I don't know. Maybe I just get loud and get quiet. I can't tell. It would have to be if I go, uh, if that, like, gets quiet or loud mid-drone, mid-annoying drone. It's the only way to test it. Anyway, is it questions time, Jim? Uh, sure. Gravity Boots Triple Zero has a question. Uh, oh, yeah. Do you think history will look back on this time as a low point for video games? He says, consider how graphics hog game graphics hog games like Uncharted get tens, and how Resident Evil has sold out. Oh wow, oh, that's funny. I thought he was gonna uh, like point out how like fans are like these entitled assholes demanding all these crazy things. <laughs> <laughs> this just like this generation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, that he says that, not nothing against him. Um, you know, I'm sure the, I don't, I'm not judging him or I don't think he's a jerk or anything, but the fact that people are looking at this time, which is clearly the best time video games has ever had, easily, uh, nothing even comes close, and they're looking at it and saying, you know, this sucks, is a bad sign to me. That That is troubling. That That is what I'm worried about for, for video games currently. The fact that Resident Evil is selling out um, is not a big deal because there's tons of other games doing more or less that type of game. It's just on a smaller scale, like um, like Lone Survivor, uh, for instance. There's tons of games. There's so many games. There's never been this many games. There's small games. There's big games. There's medium range games. Everyone's covered. Everyone has more video games they can possibly ever get through. I don't know anyone who's who considers himself. Um, you know, a true fan of video games who has gotten through all of the games in their backlog. Everyone I know has at least, like, five games deep. It's never been this good, and uh, I couldn't be happier about it. I don't like every video game ever uh, that comes out, but um, that doesn't mean it's a bad time for video games just because I don't like everything. It would be bad if I did. How do, you, how, do we, how do we think that uh, Resident Evil has sold out? Because it's uh, they, they openly said... Oh, it's got to be more action now because um, uh-huh. otherwise it's not going to sell in the in the mind. And they're right; it's not like they're they're lying. If they did a Resident Evil Six that played like Resident Evil Four, it would not sell as well as a Resident Evil that plays like uh, a run and gun competitive online shooter, which is this going to have. Um, so I think 16-player multiplayer uh, out the gate. You can just jump right into multiplayer like you would with, with Call of Duty on, on uh, Resident Evil 6. I don't think that was confirmed yet. Oh, okay. That's what I had heard. Um, could be wrong. Um, like, either way. Some leaks, but, yeah, I, yeah anyways. I you're right, you're right. Uh, as usual, Hamza, you're, you're up on your news. But it is a game where not only can you walk and shoot now, but you can, like... Uh, do a matrix and like slow mo and shoot people and do like a knee slide under zombies' legs and like shoot them in the air and stuff like that. It's not a slow plotting, stressful, um, disempowering survival horror series anymore. It's a uh, it's an action series now, which is fine. That's what people want, so they're making it. And if you want slow plotting survival horror with powerlessness, there's tons of games out there for you. Fatal Frame 2 remake coming out in Europe in a month or something. So so everyone gets what they want. They just might not be getting it exactly where they think they should get it, and that's, that's I, not something to complain about. I, I really hope 6 makes up for the pile of dog shit that 5 was. I think for you, Hamza, I'm guessing, you know, just like everyone is, but I'm guessing for people with your tastes that it will. Because you you don't like games that are like half and half from what I know of you. You want games to go like all out. And I think Resident Evil 6 is going to go all out for being a zombie action game. And well, I mean, it. it's not just for the fact that it's going to be an action game. Like, I, I adore, I think Resident Evil 4 was the best Resident Evil. Period. Sure. Yeah, me too. And like I, five seemed like it was just regurgitating like the the basic formula that four did. Right. Like Capcom wasn't confident enough in themselves to like try something new, mm-hmm. which is what I feel like six is trying to do now. Oh, I think they're going all out with six. I think they're gonna make it very new, but in ways that make it not like four in in most regards. It's gonna be more like a SOCOM game, I bet. Except um, SOCOM crossed with Resident Evil Four. It's not a good example. SOCOM's horrible. 
<laughs> sorry about that. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, I give up on talking about it. I'm sorry, I failed. I was going to give up and be a failure in the corner. Jim, what do you think? Uh, I think this generation has seen the emergence of a few things I'm not fond of. Um, the exploitation of, of certain... Of, of online, not just to provide multiplayer stuff, but to... Online passes, DLC, all that? All that stuff. Um, basically bringing... A lot of stuff that was on the PC, bringing it to consoles, to the point where consoles are now just shit PCs. You know, like you go through the same bullshit, you go through the same having to prove your loyalty to the publisher before they let you play it, um, except you can't do mods and the graphics don't look as good. And it's like, it's getting to the point where if there, if I've got a choice between, wh- you know, where I play my game, it's going to be on my computer where at least I have some sense of freedom. And uh, this sense of control, I don't like it. And it seems in this generation to be worse than ever before. Um, I also think it's the generation where we've, gotten to see just how broken the industry's business models are, especially Mm. with the rise of free-to-play, that are exposing the $60 plus microtransaction business model that most publishers have as bullshit. We've got Tribes Ascend, we've got Blacklight Retribution, uh, we have got Super Monday Night Combat, all bringing full games for free and doing the microtransaction shit that console games are trying to do um, where they're having their cake and eating it so we've seen the emergence of a lot of bullshit but hopefully as well the emergence of a lot of evidence that it doesn't have to be that way Mm. you know we've got free to play really starting to bring out some startling quality we've got games like legend of grimrock uh, exploiting how online everyone is to have this web distributed indie game $15 which is fully single player DRM free um, provides a robust narrative experience well I mean not so much narrative but it's fully single player minded mm. um, sure. just proving what the industry says wrong like that game more than made up for its development costs just by being there uh, so I think it's it's this generation perhaps won't be looked at as the low point. It's certainly, I will look back on it as the time when a lot of terrible ideas came to light. But at the same time, that kind of atmosphere breeds innovation and people rebelling against that kind of system. I liken it to the comedy scene in Britain in the 1980s, where Mm. before that, British entertainment was all, you know, all the old boys, the old university boys all in with each other, basically giving each other public slaps on the back with just tired, trite comedy and and game shows and all this shit. Then along came these angry independent comedians, left wing, young, not as educated, giving this real raw, emotional, from the heart kind of comedy. Uh, And I see that now, like we have these big fucking businesses just copying each other over and over again. And you see these indie guys that stand out and say, well, no, it doesn't have to be this way. I'm double fine and I can make fucking several million dollars over the Internet. I'm human head. I can put out a fucking dungeon crawling single player RPG that's hardcore as fuck if I want. And I'm going to make money doing it. So... I think it's a very good time to be a gamer in one of the worst climates we've got. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I think um, now there's so many options that there weren't before, and people are going to use those options in good ways, like um, putting out cheap, fun games that everyone can afford and play. And they're going to use those options in bad ways in order to uh, control the consumer and um, squeeze the consumer for every last drop. So with all these options... It really brings out who these developers and publishers really are, um, and people are going to have to choose what kind of business model they want to accept. But that's kind of different from the actual games. I think if you look at the amount of games that came out in the past two years, it's just so many, so many yeah, games. I mean, so many of them are good. I I consider this a low point business wise, business wise for the big AAA publishers. Mm-hmm. As far as the actual games go, I think they've been fucking great. I yeah. think I think. I think I said this once before. Never before have we had, like, the very best games coming out tied to the very worst business models. 
<laughs> I think yeah, that's, that's how I see this industry. It's like we're getting some of the best experiences ever wrapped up in some of the worst packages, like the least consumer-friendly packages. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they'll get away with that for as long as they can. It'll be really interesting if, because, uh, you know, people are talking about the Wii U already. We talked about it last week. Is it going to be worth it? Is it going to suck? Are people just going to wait for a PlayStation 4 or the, the next Xbox to come out? If the PlayStation 4 and the next Xbox are all um, online pass, no used game consoles, then and the Wii U isn't, I think it's pretty obvious what's going to happen from there. Um, they're going to get smoked. People are not going to put up with that, I don't think. Yeah. Nope interesting way to see the tide turn we'll see i mean you know there's all this talk about the next generation being even worse with like online passes built in and right the 360 being ostensibly this big lump of drm i'm sorry the next xbox with like you've always got to be online or whatever i don't think they can afford to do that i i i just i i can't see them getting away with it for much longer not when we've got games coming out that are showing us how it doesn't have to be that way and hopefully the more online we get the less important publishers will become and they'll end up desperate harridans like the RIAA yeah maybe maybe they're definitely trying to use online to make themselves more important but I hope that people can can work around that and not support that either yeah I feel like the the more online we get too though like it it leads credence to the, the the whole like consoles not having disk drives like i don't see the next xbox or playstation not having disk drives like they have to like, we're not at that point yet where everyone in america or, or the major countries can uh will ha- will can have like these high speed internet connections where they can download like these like 9 gigabyte 10 gigabyte games however big they are yeah. especially uh, in america where they fucking refuse to update the broadband services. Mm. It's a joke at the moment. Yeah. yeah, internet. Come on, internet. Get with it. Yeah. I mean, like, the following generation, I can see that happening more so, like, as, as everything advances. Oh, sure. Or, uh, well, by then, then, hopefully, wireless internet will just be like the radio, and you can just have some whenever you want. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Well, we I think we see. answered that question. Yeah, yeah we fucking hell. Yeah, um, nice. Kyrox says, Jonathan... Do you ever pick the hairs off your chinny chin anus? <laughs> I pick them off my scrotum. You you pick them off your scrotum, Thompson? Yeah. yeah. Neat. We'll we'll <laughs> think about that then. I will okay. think about that now. Uh, <laughs> the ham the ham bugler says, "How does Holmes maintain such a firm muscular buttock?" <laughs> when has he ever? When has he ever seen my buttock? <laughs> my one buttock. My well, one he buttock. said. A firm muscular buttocks with an X. I, I oh. changed it to buttock for a better grammatical flow. Oh, okay. Very nice. Um, I have no idea. I've never looked at my uh, butt, really. I've seen it out of like the corner of my eye in a mirror, but I, I don't know much about my own butt. Fair enough. I um, should add about the, the hair pulling from my scrotum. Like, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> like, these are hairs that are like about to come off, anyways. And, like, I'm oh, just like, ones. I'll play Oops. with my dick. Like, before I go to sleep, or whatever, whenever I want to. Just really. whenever you want, yeah. Yeah, and, like, sometimes Trade. I'll just, like, mess with the hair there. <laughs> yeah, why not? It's yours. Brilliant. Who's to say you shouldn't? I don't uh, want it to be a forest down there, because, you know, the, the women's... They, they yeah, get women, lost. women get lost prefer or suffocate. you to pluck your testicle hair and have it be kind of a, a rosy red, swollen, <laughs> infected, <laughs> sore... sore <laughs> what? Fuck you! <laughs> I was being sarcastic for comedy. I'm just kidding around. Uh, hey, Sanar says... Hey, <laughs> Sanar says, what happens when an unstoppable force, Jim's rock-hard phallus, meets an immovable object, Jonathan's quivering anus? My, my quivering anus is an immovable object? Uh, ap- apparently. <laughs> Neat. I will... <laughs> Formation of a new galaxy. That's what happens. <laughs> I think that Superman once answered that question, not phrased exactly like that, but along those lines. Um, and his answer was, they surrender. Uh-huh. So, if your penis and my anus have a fight, we will surrender, whatever that means, according to Superman. So that's good. Thanks, Superman. Okay. Yeah. Um 
Cool. <laughs> Sozak says, what do you guys think of Dragon's Dogma? I can't get excited about it at all. It looks it looks neat, you know, graphics are good, but I am just so burnt out on the uh, mythology there. It's like, oh, jeez. Uh, you know how I am. I'm, I can get excited about Skyrim from, from videos and stuff like that at a time. I was like, oh, Tolkien Dragons, oh. Mm. This makes me want to go somewhere else. And the same with Dragon's Dogma. I'm just like, oh, Dragons, uh. Yeah. Maybe it it'll cool, be cool, but uh, I'll never play it because I don't have time for those type of games. Yeah, yeah, that too. That too. I need some ideas. Give me some ideas and put them in my face. Right we uh, Dale Dale North, he just had like a like a cool, like extensive hands on preview uh, this yeah. past week. And then Jim, you just had your impressions go up today as well. Yeah, I get the demo ago today. Uh, I'm really excited about it. It's it's a bit chaotic, like all the you can get a whole bunch of allies, and they will all talk at once, and and there's a lot going on. Uh, like so Mash, it's... like the movie Mash. Yeah. I love Mash. <laughs> You're selling me on Dragon's Dogma, so it's kind of like Mash. Okay, it's like Robert Altman. It's like of. Mash, but you can fire arrows at a Griffin until the Griffin falls on the floor. Then you can mm-hmm. run up to the Griffin and you can grab its feathery head, and then it'll try and take off, and it'll fly around in the air with you hanging onto its head, smashing it in the face, and then mm. it'll fall over and die, and it'll be brilliant. <laughs> that sounds okay. Is there? Can you make the mash music play in the background during that? Uh, you could probably just do it with your mouth. You can, <laughs> I, I might give that a go later. I'll just like I'll be smashing the Griffin, going. <laughs> You know that that song has lyrics, and not not everyone knows that. Yeah, I just did the lyrics. No, no, they're really uh, they're real lyrics. It's really depressing too. Uh, it's like, cause suicide is painless. It comes with many changes. It's like so morbid. Shit. Look it up. Enjoy it. Mash lyrics about suicide. Talking about suicide a lot this week. Sorry, guys. I'm a real bummer. Uh, How are you? It's been a sad episode. I do apologize. Yeah, I've been, sad. yeah, I was thrown off my game today. I had to, a lot more plan than I was going to do just with fucking around with Skype because my old version of Skype just decided not to work. So I had to re record and re download, and that threw me out of sorts. And Holmes is depressed, and Hunter mm. has been picking his pubes away. <laughs> yeah, entertaining week though. Tons of laughs. Yeah, I've had a great time. Mad two three one ask that two one three rather ask that fucking space marine question again. Wants me to say space marine in that dramatic voice of mine. We asked. I asked you like last time you asked this dude what dramatic voice. Which <laughs> one is it? Don't you have like a hell gas voice? Yeah, but that's not. I mean, that's a. I could Space Marine. There you go. There you go. That can be your friend's ringtone. uh, There. It's kind of dramatic. Sure. I mean, it's not really. That's. I don't. I don't care. Do you think he means like Space Marine or something? I don't know. I don't have a. I don't have a dramatic voice. I sound like a child. How do dramatic people sound? Like they're really serious, right? Say just say, say Space Marine. Like you're just telling me that um. That I have cervical cancer. I can't. That's too funny. <laughs> <laughs> You're the doctor. My cervix is in trouble. Tell me, but by saying the word space marine. Uh, you know how you always wanted to have kids? Funny thing. <laughs> How's that? Was that dramatic? <laughs> you would be a good doctor. Was that like an episode of Dallas or not? That was exactly like Dallas, yeah. And the Falcon Crest as well. <sighs> That's my signal that I can't talk about the subject anymore because I've ran out of ideas. It's a sigh. It's a sad sigh. Wanna do another question? Or we what do you what do you want to do, Jim? I'm just I'm trying to find some. They're all Yeah. Is it good to have the microphone next to my eyeball like this? this Probably. Really... No, you should like press it against your eyeball every time you talk. <laughs> Get, like, the, the optimal audio quality going. 
Uh, oh, we got one from Maxwell Rorig, our uh, oh. friend over at Flixist. Yeah, he's a great guy. Flixist.com, ladies and gentlemen. That is a Mothered, mothered Medan site. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, modern method, you meant. I'm Thank sure. you. Yeah. Yes. 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 Mothman's mund method. Mound. Mothman's <laughs> mound. Oh, the the fun we have on Pod Toy. Indeed. Yeah. He's got quick hit questions for all of us. Oh wow. So for me, he says, would you ever consider doing stand up comedy again? Um, I consider it like for five minutes every day. Then remember, I'm shit. So. <laughs> I don't think that's true. Maybe I've got little bits. I, like every now and then, I'll come up with an idea and I'll make a like a mental note. To, if I did stand up again, that is what I would say. But it's not something I've got time or really a good location to do. Well, so. if I were you, I would be like, okay, tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands now, of people on the internet, I can make a video for, or I can like painstakingly craft a set. For 50 people down at the lounge, should be like, eh, I don't really know why I'd bother with the with the set when well, I've already got Well, the thing is, I mean, I do the videos every week, but there is something about a crowd. It's why oh, sure. I always like doing the the panels at PAX Prime, which yeah. I doubt we'll ever be allowed to do again. Oh, they can't be mad. No, I mean, we got invite, we got our press passes for PAX East last month, so I think we're good. Well, I did make. Them oh, there. oh, right, that incident. I oh, I thought you were talking really... about. What happened? I thought you were talking about what happened at our panel last year where we threw hamburgers. Well, we kind of did it like we threw hamburgers and stamped cake into the ground. Yeah. And then Holmes insulted one of the Penny Arcades. I did not he, insult any of the Penny you Arcades. You called him a. You called him a rapist. <laughs> I didn't. He you was. Did. He misunderstood a post I did, and he got pretty insulting and mean to me actually. And then I was like, "Hey, want to talk about this? Not on Twitter." And then he just wouldn't talk to me, and then he half apologized later. So yeah, yeah they're they're me- <laughs> yeah, again. Say, never mind. It's too late now. What is it, Hamza? No. What? I think it's disco. Disco. Uh, disco. Uh, disco. Hamza. Yes, disco. No, tell me what you were gonna say. It's no disco. No, I was gonna say we shouldn't bring it up again. <laughs> oh, then I already brought it up again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess yeah. so. I like Penny Arcade. Their cartoons are fun. They're very funny cartoons. They seem like nice guys, and I never meant to offend them or make them yeah. sad in any way. I don't think they like me. Now they have Ben Kukera, uh, who ben... runs the Penny Arcade Report. That's that's cool. He's, He's an awesome great. guy. He's awesome. Ben, ben Kukera is great. Yeah. I think he might have told Penny Arcade guy number two to not be as mean to me. So thank you, Ben. Good for them. And... Um, <laughs> yeah. Maxwell also wants to know, Jonathan, what is your favorite thing to eat off of your face plate? I am never going to eat anything off of my face plate. I look at it a lot. Uh, other people are asking me questions about it. It's in every episode of Sub Holmes now. It's on part of the set. Uh, I had the creator of um, the Skullgirls fighting game engine, Mike Z, on last week, and he just wanted to talk about the plate the whole time. He didn't <laughs> want to talk about Skullgirls. He was totally fascinated with it. Uh, that was a really fun episode. If you guys like fighting games, uh, listen to that on the podcast. should be up. Mike C. is a brilliant guy when it comes to dissecting what makes fighting games tick. He's great. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'm not going to touch that plate. It's too good to eat off of. It's beautiful. Thanks again, I know, Crystal. I, I still plan to eat beef tips off it, but I, I kind of don't want to. Yeah, don't put it in the microwave. My mom will be really mad at you if you put it in the microwave. <laughs> She'll freak out. Well, we got one more question for harm, sir. Uh, why are you the way you are? <laughs> I'm just wonderful. You are. You can't help it. You are beautiful, no matter what they say. Words can bring you down. <laughs> Whoa. So don't even you are you are like a a, a songbird. <laughs> wow, I don't know if you you're getting this, Jim, but when you do that, you literally sound like you turn into the Antichrist, like you're <laughs> making unnatural demonic. Did uh, you guys hear what I said? I have no idea because it kind of cut out. I couldn't hear you, Hamza. What'd you say? Oh, I said because I'm just wonderful. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, I heard That's that That's why I sung my lovely song to you. Yeah, you are. Oh, I... You're That's like... You heard, but I said... Yeah, See, we can't even... I can barely keep a Skype connection going, yet we're talking about future consoles that are all downloadable games. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're not ready for that, technologically speaking. I'll tell you what, though. Mm-hmm. About done. We did it. We've done it, guys. <laughs> Yay. Everything's okay. What episode number is this? 19, uh, uh, 199 already? 99 Luft Balloons. When Luft are we going to record the 200th episode? 99 a Luft Balloon. Captain Kirk and something else. <laughs> You've got to uh, uh, tease and pitch, Jim. Tease and pitch. You're uh, the 200th episode. This is Jonathan a big Holmes, event. Every time I tease you, I pitch. <laughs> I figured. I figured you'd say that. Yeah, I think this is episode 199. Um, next week will be episode 200. We have got some stuff planned, some special stuff planned. Um, I don't want to give it away, but if you have been a long time listener of Podside, I think you're going to like what we cook up if. Skype doesn't fuck me over like it did last week and ruin everything. So, fingers crossed, we'll have something good for you. Uh, but uh, apart from that, all that remains to be said is goodbye and thank you for listening. You can catch us all on Destructoid.com. Uh, we have a preview up of Crisis 3, courtesy of Hamza. We have a review for Prototype 2, which went up, as well as Risen 2, Bloodforge, and a whole bunch of other games. Jesus, um, there was a lot of reviews the other day. Didn't you put up four in one day? Four uh, or five? I put up three, and then two others went up. We had five reviews go up. Um, yeah. We still got a backlog of, of older games that people have only just sort of gotten done. Um, so that's all going on. We have got Sup Homes every Sunday. This week is Jasper Byrne. That's right. Uh, what time is that? Oh, that's 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a live streaming talk show. We interact with the people watching the show as much as we can. A good amount, I think. Um, So come in there. It's only an hour. People want it to be longer, so working on that. But for now, it's only an hour. We'll fit in as many of your questions and interactions as uh, as we can. Um, And then the show gets turned into a podcast and clips go up on youtube after that so if you miss it and you want to hear the talking i think we've done about 10 episodes now on uh, libsyn.com just look up sup homes you can see the whole listing of everything we've done so far and uh, look for us on destructoid.com's uh, youtube channel which is youtube slash destructoid and the live stream i forgot to mention is on twitch tv which is twitch.tv slash destructoid whoa wait 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 youtube is youtube.com slash detoid Oh, oops. Hamza, what would I do? I, you and then know, our Twitch, you can call our Twitch channel just uh, detoy.tv or destructoid.tv now, and it just points to our Twitch channel. When did that start? Last week. Oh. Well, the YouTube, the YouTube thing's been forever. Right. That's slash detoyed. Yes. Not destructoid. Right. This is we, uh, This is what people want. This is like really cool old like year one story. We used to have YouTube.com slash Destructoid, but YouTube took it away from us because we were hosting a like a, a trailer from some game company. I forget who, like someone big, like like I don't want to say Activision, but someone along that line. And uh, we were told to they uh, whoever the company was had it, uh, YouTube shut our channel down basically. Whoa, when was that? This was like YouTube, like, this is 07, basically. So YouTube Whoa. just started. They didn't know what the fuck they were doing. They were afraid of everyone. So, huh. Interesting yeah. story. That was actually a good podcast uh, listening. Thanks, Hamza. Appreciate it. So anyway, we're totally off track. Sup, Holmes. Yeah, this Sunday, Jasper Byrne. We're going to talk about video games. 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you. Awesome. You are a wonderful salesman. You could sell my own cock to me. <laughs> what would you do? What would you do with it? Oh, Look, God. Poke it with a stick. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, it would hurt. Um, you can also catch me every Monday at uh, escapismagazine.com. I've got the Jimquisition. And as I say, we are available all day, every day on destructoid.com. Um, please do keep doing us lovely reviews on Amazon. Keep downloading the show, which helps. Uh, and if you want, you can buy an app, which we have on the amazon.com app store. Don't get it anywhere else. Um, it's $2. You get the episodes on your phone it's a waste of your money but we would appreciate it if you bought it just because you liked us 
So that's it, and we will see you next week for the two hundred. And you can follow me on Twitter. Oh, you Twitter. Can oh yeah. Him on Twitter. We should, we should pitch our Twitters more often, Jim. You're at Jim Sterling on Twitter, right? You are. At signed Jim Sterling. I'm at Tron Knots. Tron, as in the movie Tron. Knots, as in Don Knots. K N O T T S. And Hamza is the shortest. He's the smartest one. Uh, most forward thinking. Your uh, Twitter is what, Hamza? At CTZ? Yes. Where'd Hamza go? Did At he quit? At CTZ. Oh, yeah. there he is. Yeah. He okay. was thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's slow. God damn my internet. It's all right, Hamza. We're just having fun. We know your internet. It almost sounds like Skype's doing to you what it was doing to me before I had to download the new one. Anyway, yeah. no time to troubleshoot uh, because I can smell my dinner. Uh, so <laughs> thank you all for listening and we will see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.